Marco. 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 It's bull wrangling time. Yes, sir. Do you like me? <laughs> yes, we are back. We are back. Let me take this up a little bit. We are back, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I did not see you on Saturday night because something was happening. Uh, had a family commitment. It was a family event that I had RSVP to long ago. And because of uh, some new changes that are going to be happening in my life soon here, which the donation goal alludes to, I will be missing out on a lot. Well, not, not a lot, actually. Every, everything family related, every family event. Um, but anyways, it was a family event. It was a poker night. And, uh, you know, I'm not really a gambler. Well, I'm not a gambler. But it was a poker night, just you know, friendly, fun poker night. And I was the first one out. Out of 15 people, I was the first one out. So that's good, but I don't really give a fuck. So to get revenge, I, I, the next day I went to my aunt's house and I taught my nieces how to play poker. And now they're degenerate gamblers and I can beat them. Think with this. I'm already seeing the comments get flooded with questions like, Marco, where is it from? The shirt. Is it from alwaysmarcomerch.com? The answer would be yes. It's from alwaysmarcomerch.com. The anti-pyramid shirt in, in various colors. I couldn't even list them all to you now. But I do know, between you and I, that if you go there and you use the code GOONS, plural, you may or may not get 20% off the entire order. You may or may not get 20% off the entire order as a reward for... That's a stream exclusive offer. Uh, as, as a reward for being a loyal cult member. My cousin Gabby did, did actually bring home the bag, which is a uh, big congrats to him. And thumbs up the ting. Let's go. Let's do this. Thumbs up the ting. Click like on the stream. It's funny. Vince messaged me right as I was getting this stream set up. Let me read what he said. Um, oh, shit. I didn't even read this. Ooh. Let me send Vince a voice message right now. He literally just messaged me a whole giant ass paragraph right as I was about to start this. Vince, it's crazy you messaged me this because I literally just went live and I was like setting up when you messaged me this. Maybe we can get you on the stream tonight to let me know what's going on. Crazy. So from what I, under, from what I do know from the message that Glenn sent me on Facebook, um, apparently there was obviously another follow-up episode of uh, Losing Fortunes Radio with Glenn or maybe it was Glenn interviewing Scott Johnson on, on his show, on his channel, MLM is Fraud. But there's basically Vince Goodrum, our, our now good friend who we debated with, uh, what was it, a week ago, has uh, responded to Scott. I guess Scott Johnson invited Vince on his show. Let's go look at Glenn's channel real quick. Let's look at Glenn's channel and see what we can see what we can learn from this, okay? Because I think, what the hell is this? Because I think it's big. Uh, let me go bring this background back. Bring this back. And go like this, and then bring me over here. And then make this bigger. Yes, we did it, we did it, we did it. Okay, so this is Glenn's channel, MLM is Fraud, of course. And uh, it says here, I mean, I didn't watch all these, but Scott Johnson, oh, Scott Johnson schooled, always Marco schooled Scott Johnson. Scott Johnson destroys, I mean, Vince, man. No, sorry, Glenn, how do you expect me to watch all this? Like, what's the order? Vince Goodrum invited on to BFR, but always Marco is not welcome. Always Marco, schooled by Vince Goodrum. Marco and his audience 
are just so stupid. Okay, so this is what me and my friend Bam, who was here on the stream, you might you might have seen him in the chat before. This is what we were reacting to on Wednesday's stream. Shout out to Bam again for uh, for being here on that day. Vince just saw my message. Okay, this is literally literally happening in real time. A literal live stream. Um, always Marco schooled Scott Johnson. I think we watched that. And then here, this is two days ago. Scott Johnson's emails to Vince Goodrum. Oh my God. So it looks like literally, literally while I was uh, not even like paying attention, Scott and Vince have been going back and forth. So let's see Vince's response to Scott Johnson. I know what you're also thinking. I know what you're also thinking. I know what you're also thinking. You're thinking, Marco, is your new video that came out today about the mayor of Edmonton supporting World Financial Group and the financial regulator of Ontario's investigation of World Financial Group confirming that they're a pyramid scheme without actually saying it? Is it, is it doing so good on your channel and it's rated 2 of 10? I hear you saying that. And the answer is yes. Marco. Marco. So let's check it out here. Ooh. I like Vince's music too. I like this. Hey everybody, Home Business King here at homebusinessking.com. The reason for this video is uh, it's not quite fully set up yet. I am still transferring some business videos over. Uh, but I needed to uh, start a little bit early based upon the most recent circumstances. Now, as you guys know, I debated uh, Marco a couple of days ago uh, in regards to talking about multi-level marketing, network marketing, whatever you guys want to call it there, okay? What I never mentioned is before that, uh, you see, we had already pre-planned this far ahead. And, you know, I got some of these crazy messages from this. End By the way, thumbs up the stream because 80 people watching and 38 likes, bro. That's crazy. Literally crazy. Um, yes, yeah, Specs, thank you for being here. Thank you for telling people to thumbs up the stream. Giselle, I'll tell you what. Giselle says, is Marco coming to America? U.S., U.S.? I'm, I'll give you a little hint where I'm going. But we got to get, get these bags flying, of course. Streamlabs link in the chat. You want to support the boy. I know also, also, also what you're thinking. No, no, I'm not even going to say it right now. Bag first, talk later. Am I right? Bag first, talk later. Okay. Uh, uh, me Wednesday nights when Marco streams. Smile versus Wednesday when Marco doesn't stream. Sad. Oh, thank you, Kylie. What up, everybody? All the members. Darius, thank you for the super chat. Dylan Honey, Legend Gaming, and Paz, Kylie W. Appreciate you guys. Um... Appreciate you, Astro. No worries, my brother. Okay, here we go. Individual by name of Scott. Let me put this on the screen for you guys here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Fun fact, Vince. Dark Horse, you are a G. Thank you, Dark Horse. Really appreciate the dono. Big bag alert. God oh. did. Ah! Oh, no. Who's that, bro? Bag now, talk now. So gangsta. Thomas, thank you, Thomas. That $68.49 plus the $10 plus the $10 super chat makes six makes Nope, math is wrong. Yes, my math is wrong. Yes, yes. Uh, we're over. Oh, it was almost $69. Bag drop alert, bag drop alert. Thank you so much, Thomas. Appreciate that. Um, and thank you, Dark Horse. Appreciate you guys. Okay, I know you guys are thinking. And Vince is in the chat. Oh, it's about to get, it's about to get interesting. I know you guys are thinking, Marco. You're thinking, Marco, is it true that you got... The new M3 MacBook Pro. 
Is it true that you got the new M3 MacBook Pro in the in the space black color with the M3 Max chip and four terabytes of storage? Is it true? And I have to tell you guys what you've been hearing in the media, what you've been reading on blogs and Reddit and 4chan and 8chan and 9gag and uh, different websites is true. I did get the laptop. Why did I get the laptop? Because my donation goal is serious. I'm not joking. I am in the process right now of moving out of this place, actually, that I've been living in for the last three years and streaming here. In, in like literally not even a bit right now, the assassination attempts are way too high. The harassment from the paid assassins is way too high. The knowing of where I live by undesirable people is way too high. And uh, the rent is d too damn high also. But you know, you know your boy hates debt because debt is haram. And normally I would have just bought this thing outright, put it on the credit card and uh, you know, paid it off incrementally. But I did the financing option because literally the financing option, the interest is still less than I would have paid in credit card interest. So super smart mathematicals here. But I'm in the process of selling most of my stuff and uh, I'll be selling the PC as well. And um, I am embarking upon the next steps on my journey where I will be uh, uh, trying to tackle the MLM problem around the globe and not just locally where I live. So you're gonna see uh, investigations perhaps around. I can't my say too much. My enemies wanna be friends with my other enemies. I don't let it get to me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Thank you, Crypto Fugazi, appreciate you. That is a bar. And I wanna thank, uh... oh, he got a new merch order coming in. God did. It's from Christian. Christian, thank you. For the merch order, the anti-pyramid tea in the royal blue color. Oh, goodness gracious. He's going to be so drippy. Oh, he, did he use the code goons at, at checkout? I think he did. Did he? Oh, he did. He did. He used the code goons for 20% off. Oh, goodness. <sighs> so that's good. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not, I can't tell you guys too much information because literally the reason I'm going is because of the paid assassins who watch every single stream that I do including but not limited to Scott Johnson. And, um, you know, last time I said where I was going publicly, Scott Johnson made a complaint to uh, the U.S. border security and told them that I was coming into the United States and I got held up at, uh, at the border crossing in Toronto and I almost missed my flight to Washington where I went for the MLM conference earlier this year because he told them that I was a drug dealer. Yay! So we're not going to do that. And uh, 61 people only, uh, 61, only half of the people watching have clicked like, so unacceptable. But yeah, today, literally the whole day, I was just moving files over from my 2012 MacBook Pro, which honestly, exactly, Silicon Valley. Shout out to me for making a 2012 MacBook Pro last as long as it did. Granted, I've mostly been using this PC for the last three years, but the fact that my MacBook Pro even survived as long as it did is fucking insane. I had to do... Dude, I did so much modifying to that laptop. I replaced the hard drive with a solid state drive. I took out the CD drive and replaced it with a solid state drive. So there was two drives in there. I doubled the RAM. I literally, I put, I put a new battery. Like I stretched it as far as it could go and resisted buying a new computer for so, so long. You're kidding me. Keep your secrets, our great cult leader. I'm happy to support you, man. Keep it up. What the fuck? Bro, it's been a minute since there's been a big bag like that. Dude, Thomas. Can we give a big up and a thumbs up the ting? Thumbs up the ting. To Thomas, bro? Yeah, who the fuck is that guy? Damn, Thomas. I'm sweating already, and I'm wearing black. Shit, Thomas, thank you, man. That's crazy. That is crazy. Thumbs up the ting. I mean, that's free to do. Last time I checked, still. Um, 
But yeah, I uh, five dollars and a subscription to my channel, and I'll tell you where he's going. Says Specs. Wow, my mod's willing to betray me, sell me out for five dollars. Um, but yeah, I mean that MacBook Pro, like, for me to continue to do my work at at the same level I'm doing it or better. Um, away from where I currently live. I, I'm trying not to say too much. Thank you, Thomas, for allowing me to keep my secrets, for paying for my silence. Um, but I need a computer that's at least as powerful as my PC for editing videos and at least as portable as the 2012 MacBook Pro, which is actually quite heavy and uh, cumbersome at this point with all the modifications I've added to it. And this thing, man, I've only had it for a week. I've had it for exactly one week. This M3 MacBook Pro, why am I blurry? Yay, he's blurry. Focus on this. Focus on this. Yes! Fuck! So unprofessional. So this M3 MacBook Pro, I'm actually stunned with how light it is. And uh, like I said, I've only had it for a week, so I haven't done like any intensive stuff on it, video editing or anything like that yet. But I did, as a test, put my SD card from my camera in it and like dr dragged some 4K footage onto the timeline and it literally just, it just played. Like I didn't have to make optimized media or proxy footage or anything like that. So my first impressions is that it's a beast of a machine and I've never even heard the fans go on. Whereas my 2012 MacBook Pro, as soon as I turn it on, it sounds like a, a spaceship taking off. It's like, <sighs> sounds like a PS4. So, yes, that's good. And, uh, you know, it was thousands and thousands of dollars, so we got to get that bag up. But you look at it, I'm, I'm not going to be paying rent at this place. I'm going to be going elsewhere, perhaps figuring out a way to offset the costs. Can't say too much. You don't know, don't know when I'm going to say the official story, blah, 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 stream in the chat. So yeah, uh, Glenn is in the chat as well. Oh, goodness. Glenn says, got your message, Marco. Okay. Sorry, Vince says, got your message. Okay. Uh, Silica says, I have done nothing until two weeks ago. Updated the software in the first time in four years. Truly the ubermensch of laptop. Yeah, it was powerful. That was a powerful one. Okay, so we're back. Thumbs up the ting. M1 Mac is the best computer I've ever owned. Love it. Grace, what up? Thumbs up the ting. So here's Vince. Back to Vince. Vince saying, and thank you again, Thomas, really. That's crazy. Literally, like, man's filling up half the donut goal by himself, practically. Um... And go watch the new Emergy Sohi video that I dropped today about the mayor of my city supporting World Financial Group. There is threads in that video that tie to WFG part one, two, three, and four. So I was very close to calling it infiltrating a pyramid scheme, WFG part five, but because I wasn't actually like infiltrating, I thought it was sort of disingenuous to call it that because that's such a iconic like in-person you know, with World Financial Group, I love going in person to their events and like pressing the smoke and, and you know, and, and getting that on on camera. And this time around, it's it's more of a coverage that I'm providing. So but it basically is, you know, it is an essential installment to the World Financial Group series. So Vince, Vince is now uh, even just the first line I'm reading says, you must be really scared of me. I mean, this is how I became acquainted with Scott Johnson. This guy, this loser, emailed me almost three years ago, uh, inviting me to go on his radio show, him and Peter's radio show. Let me give it, let me give that a little giggle here. Where's the, where's the Scott giggle? Here we go. <laughs> and um, then when I politely declined, he demanded I go on the show to which I said, Scott, go fuck yourself. And now it's been nearly three years of them talking about me uh, basically every episode. So, you know, let's see, you know, Vince, I think, I mean, in the message that I got from Vince just tonight when I was starting this, uh, I don't know if he wants me to say, but maybe we can get Vince on here 
uh, maybe we can get Vince to call in tonight and see see what he thinks. So let's check this out and see what happened to Vince with Scott Johnson. Pre-plan this far ahead. And, you know, I got some of these crazy messages from this individual by name of Scott. Let me put this on the screen for you guys here. He goes and writes, he wrote me on the 15th. Why would you want to debate, Marco, about MLMs when you can debate someone who knows what they're talking about? Come to my podcast and let's debate. If you're interested, respond to this email. If you're scared, don't. <laughs> Best regards, Scott Johnson. <laughs> and then we get another message. What a cock, you know? Old ass man being like, if you're chicken, literally like an elementary school bully, like, do it unless you're chicken. <laughs> like a sniveling little rat, you know? So uh, that's hilarious. You know, he, he can just be an adult and be like, hey, here's an invitation. It's, he has to preface it with if you deny me or if you ignore me or if you decline my offer, you're chicken. Dude, look at this. Bro, Scott, this guy, Vince's arms are as big as your legs, circumference wise. This guy could pick you up with one hand and pick up Peter Mingles with the other and mash you guys together like a kid playing with his action figures. What the fuck are you saying? Literally a keyboard warrior. If you're scared, bro, come on. Don't be crazy. I, I didn't respond to it because... Oh, Vince in the chat says, you can say what I wrote to you. It, it was a long message, but basically said... Uh, basically, Vince in my DM is saying... Uh, the first line he says is, this guy is nuts. <laughs> but I have to correct you on one thing, Vince. Glenn is not buddies with Scott Johnson. Glenn is actually anti-MLM, and he is like on my side, if, if I had to put it that way. Um, and he, I don't know how he does it or why he does it, but Scott Johnson continues to talk to Glenn and allow himself to be egged on by Glenn uh, because Glenn has this masterful way of, Glenn has a masterful way of putting Scott in his place while also letting him talk enough and like stroke his ego enough to, you know, continue being willing to talk to Glenn. So, uh, but I, I, I am not aware of what happened with you and Scott yet, Vince. So this is me literally finding out about it in real time. So let's see. Number one, if you guys notice, I have an email address that's... Glenn is doing a PSYOP confirmed. I double dare you to come on my podcast. <laughs> Crazy messages by Scott? Never. So funny. What up, Sanjila? What up, Bug? <laughs> says Vince at Caliber Fitness. I bet you can't reply to this email. You guys are so funny. What up, Jared? He bullies people, so when he gets rejected, he doesn't feel bad. Such a fragile ego, for real. Vince has not put his debate up on his channel because he knows he lost badly, says Glenn. Okay, let's just listen, y'all. That's my uh, business email for my fitness business. My uh, main email for uh, other things is admin at goodroomgroup.com or admin at homebusinessking.com. Uh, Scott uses a free Yahoo account. So from the starters there, you know, I don't really pay much attention to anyone that uses a uh, free email account. Uh, you know, it doesn't cost that much money to register an actual domain for your podcast or whatever you're hitting at. But in any event, I'll just... <laughs> Suck beer says... <laughs> Suck beer says, text groomed me on Roblox. So true. So true. Nor that a lot of people do have free email accounts. I get this message on the 18th, and let me enlarge this here. Vince, you must really be scared of me. I can ask answer this question that you posted to Marco. You know, Marco, I've seen your video targeting MLM companies, which is all fine and dandy, but at no point have you recommended where someone should work at to make money or any options for those who wish to make honest money. What do you recommend? If you had paid attention to the debates uh scott you would have heard exactly what i would have said you know plain and simple scott's email is a carrier pigeon nah bro scott's email is a is a smoke signal you know i told people they can get themselves a regular job do affiliate marketing do direct sales you know do something that they have the ability to they can thumbs up the ting which is totally free to do but also pays you quite a lot from what i've heard do if someone paints pictures they should paint pictures if someone likes rapping they can keep rapping get those commas up but at this point in time uh-huh talk that shit if you want bread go get a job at a bakery you know but obviously you didn't pay attention to the debate vince in the chat says so glenn is the top but give scott a reach around once in a blue moon hey i don't know about all that but you just think that i'm just scared of you 
I don't know what you wrote Thursday. Uh, there's nothing here. Maybe you were writing to, I don't know who this Peter is, special information at hotmail.com. Oh, you're going to learn. You're going to learn who Peter is, Vince. One of these free accounts. What? A, it, you're part of this now, Vince. You know, I don't really respect anyone that's in business that uses a free... Yeah, Scott, Scott's email is carved into a wall. Morse code. Scott's email is chiseled into a stone tablet. Scott's email was written in, in the ground, in the dirt with a stick, and then it blew away. Account there, a free email account. Just register a domain and... But, you can get a domain as cheap. Oh my God, look at this. Be sure to ask Marco about his cocaine dealing career. Always Marco cocaine dealer, AKA always stupid Marco the narco mucha It's like $4.99. It makes you look a lot better. Vince, be The funniest, I have to tell you this though, honestly, I'm so sorry to keep pausing it, but the funniest nickname that Scott ever gave me that actually genuinely made me laugh and that I genuinely thought was funny was when he rearranged the letters of my name. And this was pretty clever for Scott. I don't know if he used the assistance of like, uh, in, like uh, the internet to do this, but he rearranged the letters of my name to M-A-R-C-O and called me Mr. A-O-C as in, <laughs> as in what's her name? Alexandria uh, of fucking Ocasio-Cortez or whatever her name is. And that was his way of like calling me li super liberal, Mr. A-O-C as opposed to Marco. Oh my God, that was so fucking funny. I genuinely thought that that was so clever. <laughs> so clever. It's the one, I wish you would have kept running with that because it's Mr. AOC is so much more clever and sharp than always Marco cocaine dealer, always Mark, always stupid Marco the narco, mucha goon the shyster. Who can say, who's saying all that? sure to ask Marco about his cocaine dealing career. Here we go. Uh, listen, folks, uh, I knew everything I needed to know about Marco long before we debated, you know. Uh, I, I knew he was handsome. I knew he was intelligent. I knew he had a 20% off code at alwaysmarcomerch.com if you use the code goons. I know that there was 130 people watching, but only 88 had clicked like on the ting. I knew everything I needed to know. I always do research as far as to, you know, who I'm debating, and sometimes I will play dumb. Uh, with someone in order to get occasionally has a cortex so funny at the advantage uh, That's a debate folks. That's a debate now here, Here's the thing there Scott uh, I'm gonna ignore the The messages that you've made, you know, you're not gonna get the fun goofy uh, Melvin that was in the debate you're gonna get the serious one uh, plain and simple You know, I've checked out your who's Melvin channel itself I don't know nothing about podcasts. I've not done any podcast in how long has it been? It's been at least 10 years since I've done any podcast. But, you know, I went and looked at your channel, you know. <laughs> and this no, 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 Vince. Okay, sorry, Vince. This is, where the, this is where the confusion is happening. This channel called MLM is Fraud is Glenn's channel where Glenn uploads the highlights of Scott and Peter reacting to my show or of his own interviews with Scott Johnson. Make no mistake, MLM is fraud is not Scott Johnson. Building Fortunes Radio is Peter Mingles and Scott Johnson. I know it's all very meta because I do shows on my channel where I react to their radio show. And then Glenn will do a video where he's reacting to my stream, reacting to their radio show. And then they'll put out a new radio show reacting to my stream, reacting to their radio show. And we're basically 300 levels deep in the inception Dream within a dream, podcast within a podcast at this point. The lore goes quite deep. So just wanted to clear that up, Vince. This is probably the sorriest YouTube channel I've ever seen. All it has is just stuff about Amway, Scamway, Amway. You are obsessed with this Amway stuff there. I don't know why. But what's really scary is this. You have 173 videos yet you only have 232 subscribers you almost have as many videos as you actually have subscribers and most of your most of your uh videos they only got like 30 or 40 views on it it's you know that doesn't say scott johnson doesn't even have a youtube channel uh well he does but he only uses it to comment he doesn't have like videos as far as i know Pretty much about uh you know any benefit or any value that you add for me coming on to your podcast what's vince so reasonable, so sensible. That's exactly the reason why I didn't want to go on Scott Johnson's Pupu Kaka little show because I told him 
bro, at the time, I think I had like 40,000 subscribers. I was like, Scott, like no disrespect, bro, but any information you could give me, I could disseminate easier and more effectively literally by myself than by coming on your show and wasting two hours of my time. So uh, he took offense to that. And he even tried to say that uh, the, the website hosting service or whoever, Peter Mingles or whoever runs the site, claimed that they had like tens of thousands of visitors to their site every month, which is so, I mean, I'm sure you saw it yourself. So ever. Uh, so let me give you a little bit of advice here, Scott. Uh, and I'm not sure who this Peter is. I, I guess I can give you some advice as well. Peter is his husband. Oh, okay. Uh... Insanity is when you continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. Nope. It's actually not. I mean, that's a common like saying that insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Actually not what insanity is, but I'm rocking with you for now, Vince. Okay. You have posted 173 videos about Amway, Ponzi-nomics. You've even used copyright material. Nobody's paying attention to it. Okay. You know, and I actually played the video and I saw why. You, you simply don't add any value to your videos. There's there's no real content there. You're it's a bunch of rehashed stuff, you know. You you're you're putting up other copyrighted content, you know, pretty you know. I don't know what to say. This is why this channel sucks and I would honestly think that your podcast is probably in the same light because Glenn getting bodied right now by accidentally being confused with Peter. I mean Scott. See, even I'm confused. Because if you have a good podcast then you would definitely have better results on your YouTube channel. That's you a fact. Know, I can understand if you had just started your YouTube channel or so, but this goes back months. 173 videos and you've only got 232 subscribers? What What is wrong with you, dude? I mean, seriously, what is wrong with you? You know? But here's the thing, uh, uh, Scott. If you wish for me to actually come on your show, first off, you're going to apologize. You need to apologize for me for writing the these stupid uh email messages that's not the way to invite someone onto the show saying you. that if you don't come on uh i'm scared of you that, that's for starters N thank you number two you need to present some sort of value as far as to you know any of your credentials basically your thank you scott i actually genuinely hope you're listening to this your net worth or so okay what experience do you have in business i couldn't find really anything about you okay I mean, <laughs> you may have thought, for real. thought that I'm some sort of goofy kid or so forth. I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty old guy there, you know. I'm almost ready for AARP. I'm a very successful business person. You know, I, I live by the, even though I... Uh, Vince says he won't be able to get on the phone tonight, but I did make a video dissecting what I think is Scott Johnson website. Okay, sick. I can't wait. Live by the fire code, financially independent, retire early. You know, I still maintain a very decent net worth. I'm pretty well off. Uh, not because I had good parents or anything. Vince, prove prove you are well off and hit that stream labs link in the chat. Anything like that is because of hard work, you know, not just in network marketing, but in direct marketing, in business and working and doing seminars. I'm a straight up hustler, you know. Woo. That's the way I was born and raised. Here. It doesn't matter what type of business it is. I'm going to kill it, you know. I was Woo! a. Hey, 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 Vince, undo one of them buttons. Unzip that vest a little bit. I'm a killer, he says. You do have sort of the Jeffrey Dahmer glasses. Talk that shit. Say it with your chest. Vince, let him have it. Vince is a G. I love Vince. I was born and raised here. It doesn't matter what type of business it is. I'm going to kill it, you know? Woo! I need that as a soundbite. That's a drop. I'm a killer, you know? Let me listen again. The way I was born and raised here. It doesn't matter what type of business it is. I'm going to kill it, you know? Woo! Or he said, I'm going to kill it. Ah, oh, fuck it. You know, I was a telemarketer too, you know, and I was a great telemarketer, but that doesn't mean I'm going to go and recommend telemarketing to someone. That's no different than network marketing. So, Scott, you, I'm going to offer you this advice one more time. If you wish to have someone as a guest on your show, first off, don't write them and say that if you don't come on here, you're scared. People are just going to ignore that. Unread. Uh, number two, you need to present some sort of credentials here. If if your podcast is about the same as this YouTube channel, then it's going to be a waste of my time. Number three. It's actually way worse. The, the YouTube channel, Glenn's YouTube channel is actually, actually does a pretty good job of like spicing up the material on Building Fortunes Radio because 
the Building Fortunes radio user interface, if you saw it, Vince, is just literally a white screen with text. It is the worst thing you've ever seen. Three, you need to have some sort of business experience. You need to have some references to some credentials. LOL and pause. Credentials. And thumbs up the ting. 50 of you haven't clicked like. Make it make, it make sense. Now, Marco, he has over 80,000 subscribers. You thank, know. You, thank you. So, so humble. He's so humble. He's the biggest, but he's so humble. Being on his channel presents value towards me because I know people are going to see me and him debate. That's why I went up there. That's why I went to him. It wasn't him that went to me. In your case, you don't have anything of value, at least that I can see. Now, if you apologize to me for writing these uh, stupid letters and presenting a format for yourself. Uh oh, did you hear that sound? Did you hear that sound? It's another merch order for $50. Who's it from? Oh, I, I don't know if I should have to say the name because maybe some people don't want their information stated, but it's somebody buying the anti-pyramid tea in navy and in black. Oh, gosh. Oh, shit. He's getting the bags tonight. Let me see. Did they use the code goons for 20% off their order? Oh, they used the code goons for 20% off their order. Gosh. Maybe I might have even lost money on that order. I don't know. He just gives it away. I'm just giving it away. Thank you. You know who you are. As far as to why I should debate you, what value do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table? What is your business experience? Are you successful? Nothing. You know, no. or so forth. If you are, then I will be more than happy to reconsider it. But for now, uh, young man, you need to grow up. Young man, he's like in his 60s. Okay. That's all I got to say for right now. Make sure you like and subscribe to Home Business King. Shout out to Vince. I love this. Let me see. Let me see the follow up video. By the way, Vince, I'm guessing it's on this channel. Is it called The Importance of Maintaining a Properly Functioning Website? That would be so funny if it was. Uh, which one is it? See, Vince knows how to clean it up. Vince knows how to clean up. Is it this? So here we have this website. You know. Oh, yeah. MLM Facts. Uh, uh, okay. This is from how long ago? Yeah, bad websites, bad websites, bad website. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe this isn't the video. Let me know, Vince, which the proper, what the proper video is. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a free thumbnail course, Vince, so that you can start bodying these thumbnails. Um, damn. Yeah, it's crazy how many of Scott's blessings he has blocked on himself by simply being rude to the people who have had beef with me. Like, all the people who I've debated, Scott has managed to have beef with them. Dale, who I did the debate with, you know, remember Dale when he was trying to tell me about his uh, collectibles MLM? Him and Scott have beef. Dominic Izzo, him and Scott have beef. Vince, now him and Scott have beef. It's crazy how easy it would be for Scott to form the Sinister Six of MLM supervillains to fight me, assuming I'm Spider-Man, which I would be. And he just fumbles the bag every time. Fumbles. It would have been easy for you to get Vince to go on your show. But you're literally just such a cock, you can't even help it. By the way, I promised my spies that I will keep my mouth shut on this, which you know I hate to do. But I am currently in the early chess move stages, okay, of setting up a play, a chess move that will absolutely destroy Peter Mingle's life. And I mean that in the most like truest way, literally like down to, down to the minutia of his day-to-day -day routine. But I've promised my spies that I will keep quiet, but just know, The lore is still fully on, okay? The lore is still fully on. To be fair, Scott Johnson, whole life has been a fumble. Yep. And Pass says the tactical nuke of Ming's life. Yep. Yep. That's the video. Okay, thank you. Vince, let me show you what their actual site looks like. Building Fortunes Radio. Let me show you what their actual site looks like so you can see this. It's called Building Fortunes Radio. This is Peter Mingle's website. And Scott Johnson's page is right here. It's called The Scott Johnson Show. This guy in the picture right here is Peter Mingles. He's also in the thumbnail of uh, my video. This is the site. 
No, I'm not making it up. This is the website. This number right here, you can call, speak to Peter Mingles if you wish. Yeah, this is literally it. Look at the, look at the um, show that's up here. Stop the Amway tool scam, Scott Johnson, and MLM is fraud, Glenn, with Peter Mingles, home business king. So, does, first of all, does Scott name his radio show episodes the same way he gives people nicknames? Always Marco the Narco, the Mooch, Mooch the Goon, the Shyster. Stop the Amway tool scam, Scott Johnson, MLM is fraud, Glenn, with Peter Mingles. This is not a title. So... You can go to uh, the Scott Johnson page and see all of the episodes. They, they post them quite frequently. As you can see here, the player is basically useless. No, fa no uh, all, all you have here is a download and a playback speed option, but this thing you can barely scrub because it's so tiny. Um, the titles are all almost the same. The episodes are vi virtually the same, and it just goes on and on and on. I mean, look at all these fucking episodes. It's crazy. So look at this one. MLM is fraud. Glenn and Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles. Uh, stop the Amway tool scam. Scott Johnson on MLM News in New York. Scott, God did. Come on now. Come on now. Why is that donation? Why is it? Why is it so big? The alert. God damn. Shush. Thank you, Shush. If this is Vince, imagine if this is Vince. Imagine if this is Vince. Okay, it's not Vince. It's not Vince. Shh. This person who donated says shush, and I'm clicking on their name, and I'm seeing in Streamlabs in the background who it really is, and I know who it is, but as promised, I'm going to keep it shush. I'm going to keep it shush. Me on the thumbnail with the lightning coming out of my hands. This is a bagalicious evening. I'm feeling the bag tonight. More bags. This is where I'm moving to. The cat's out of the bag. This is where I'm moving to. I, I don't use the office background that much, but I got to use it more. Me and the gal here are in the office and, uh, you know, it's going how it usually goes. Oh, here comes Harley Quinn. So keep them bags coming. Thank you very much, Shush. Really appreciate that. Uh, young man in the mind, not the body. So true. Scott slash Peter, come talk in a cup in, on a string in my garage. You'll get paid an exposure. <laughs> Scott apologizing. <laughs> uh, here we go. Here we go. Ryan Peach says, just got my order in for the t-shirts. Woo! Um, what up, Trevor Warren? Site straight out of the early 2000s, 90s even. Last updated in 1999 for real. Wow. Uh, the, Vince says, yeah, it's sad. Fuck. It's crazy how, imagine everyone you meet in your life or like ever come into contact with just pitying you. At best, pitying you. And at worst, thinking you're an actual fucking psycho. That's the existence of Scott and Peter. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? I can just see it now. I can just imagine it. Peter and Scott in their little offices or in their garage doing their radio shows, their wives chained up, you know, in another room or not physically chained up, but like locked, locking themselves in the room so that in the bedroom so that Scott and Peter can't get in. They sleep in the office or in the garage. They don't even see their wives. Their wives wait till they go to sleep and they come out at night to like try to get some bread or something because they don't want to actually have to talk to Scott or Peter. I can literally imagine that being the case. Um, so funny. Once you leave, will you tell us about the assassination attempts? If I can. If I can. You know it's tough. Um, Robert Fitzpatrick's Ponzionomics. Who the hell is this? I have never ever witnessed... Anyone embarrassed as badly as Vince on Marco's channel? V Glenn, did you change your username to Robert Fitzpatrick's Ponzionomics? Whoever that is, change your name away from Robert Fitzpatrick's Ponzionomics. You cannot use, you cannot just use that name, bro. <laughs> the fuck? What up, Hamza? What? Okay, so anywho, basically, I mean, this is impossible for me to like sift through, but from what Glenn told me, in the Facebook message he sent me, and actually, you know what? I can go on Glenn's channel and find this myself. So Glenn said to me in a Facebook message, um, 
I'm reading. Vince responds to a series of Scott Johnson emails to him. Scott also gives his take on this. I'm in the process of uploading. Okay, so now, okay. So we saw the debate between me and Vince, right? We're on the same page. We've now watched Vince's response to Scott Johnson's emails. Actually, I'm missing a step. Me and Vince did the debate. That's step one. Step two, Scott watches the debate, starts emailing Vince like a weirdo. Step three, Vince makes that video that we just watched saying, Scott Johnson, why are you being a weirdo? Now, here we are, we're caught up to the modern day lore. Literally, these videos are still being uploaded in real time, like five hours ago. So this is Glenn's channel. Glenn, thankfully, with this channel, MLM is Fraud, documents the entire saga. Look, he documents uh, stealing my thumbnail, all good. He documents me versus Vince. He documents Scott's breakdown of me versus Vince. He documents Vince's response to Scott Johnson's emails, and now he's documenting Scott Johnson's response to Vince's response to Scott Johnson's emails in response to the debate between me and Vince. <laughs> I can't make this shit up. Oh. Imagine somebody asking me, what do you do for work? I'm like, well, you have to understand. First, me and Vince did the and explaining that whole thing. Glenn made a playlist. No way. BFR. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Let's see the playlists. Um, uh, always Marco versus Scott Johnson and Vince Goodrum. We watched those ones with Bam. Also, fun fact, Vince told me about, uh, sorry, Glenn told me about a uh, episode of BFR where Julie Anderson went on. I still haven't listened to it. Shout out to Julie. So Julie Anderson and Glenn both went on Losing Fortunes Radio. And apparently Scott was very nice to Julie while they were speaking. And then after she got off the phone, he called her a nut job. Bro, <laughs> literally, what an idiot, what a psychopath. Okay, so this must be it. BFR, Business King, and Always Marco. What would we do without Glenn? So, Scott Johnson's emails to Vince Goodrum on Always Stupid Marco Anti-MLM. I also really appre appreciate that Vince, sorry, fuck, that Glenn takes the time to, to like ca do things like capitalizing stupid so that us viewers can read the title exactly the way Scott Johnson said it. All right. Let's get in our E. Robert Smith, Robert, Roger Van Blissingen, Chase Sanders mode right now. Okay. And uh, let's check it out. Apparently, uh, in one of the messages that I think it was uh, Glenn sent me a message saying that like, Scott Johnson, after, after Vince declined to go on their show, Scott Johnson, like, makes fun of him for being gay and shit, which is, like, of course, you know, fucking insane. All right, let's check it out. Here we go. Those new list war, but uh, for those new listeners, which some people think we don't have, but we do. <laughs> Already starting off. Fake news. New listeners, bitch, where? I need to turn this up. This is so, this is such bad quality. Um, welcome to the show, Glenn, and, and go right ahead. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Betty. Yeah, I'm very excited about being on, to, on today or tonight. Um, so, yeah, I, I was very, this wasn't what I was expecting a week ago when I was watching Marco debate Vince. Um, I was expecting, actually, Vince and Scott to become allies, but it's not the way... What is, what is this chat? Is this my stream? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Panned out. It's actually panned out that. Look look how meta this is. You at home right now are watching or re-watching me react to a video of me. I should have wore a different shirt. I'm literally wearing the same shirt from alwaysmarketmerch.com that I'm wearing in the debate. So it's literally... Hold on. My head is confused. I am watching... I am watching on the monitor right now because I'm watching this the same as you are. I'm watching me, watching me, watching Vince, but actually I'm watching, I don't even, I don't even get it. Unbelievably, there's a, something of, what of a feud going on between Scott Johnson and Vince. <laughs> the next video is going to be like another frame, <laughs> another picture and picture of this. The business king now this really does blow me away actually though can we first start to have a look at how scott invited vince 
splash the business king onto Building Fortunes Radio. Do, do you want to talk? Sure. Now, is, is he, well, well, first of all, is he the business king, or is he the, is he the self-proclaimed home business king? There's Peter. I hope you guys have at least figured out the difference between Scott and Peter's voices by now, even though they both are talking through the space station's radio. Which one is he? I forget. Yeah. He's the self-proclaimed home business king. Um, if you have a look at his page, it says, the home business king, building empires from the comfort of your own home. It's a big claim. Yeah, nothing like an income claim. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a big, big claim. Helping somebody build an empire from home. Yep, no doubt. Yeah, so um, just to give people a little bit of background, I noticed Vince messaging uh, Marco on his live shows. Um, I think it was back on um, October 14th because I wrote when my first, I mean, I, I wrote Vince my first email on uh, October 15th. Scott Johnson has the, the, the big poster, like the big tack board in his, in his garage or in his kitchen with like the red yarn. And in the center at the top is a picture of me and all these threads connecting to it. There's like Dominic Izzo, Vince, <laughs> Julie Anderson. And uh, Marco didn't notice that Vince was reaching out to him yet. He, he had made a comment. I think he even sent, sent some instant messages on social media. You know, and, and Marco is so famous, he just doesn't see everything because he gets such a barrage of, you know, people that are just adulating him that he just, you know, is overwhelmed uh, by the numbers. So, you know, it's understandable he didn't see these messages. Uh, so true. So true, frankly. We have... We call it having 88,000 subscribers, frankly, 100,000 very soon, and we call it 25,000 on TikTok almost, and we call it getting messages on there every day, and we call it 10.8K on Instagram. That's what they call it, and so many. Um, but, but over time, uh, Glenn, I mean, uh, Vince kept putting in messages on subsequent shows as well. But let me go ahead and do this first uh, email that I sent to Vince before Marco even noticed that Vince was reaching out to him. Uh, so here's my email. It says, Vince, why would you want to debate Marco on MLMs when you can debate someone who knows what they're talking about? The fact that Scott Johnson is like doubling down on how much of a cock he was in these emails and, and being like, <laughs> and reading out loud on a new episode with Glenn what he said to Vince in the emails and being like, well, Glenn, what I said was, if you're not scared, the fact that he doesn't even see how crazy this is, is crazy. Come on my podcast and let's debate. If you're interested, respond to this email. If you're scared, don't. And, and so that was my first um, email to Vince um, because I really wanted to, uh, you know, kind of help him understand how... Help him? What kind of fucking message of help started with, if you're scared, don't? Imagine fucking Mother Teresa going into the, you know, the, the hospice. If you want to get help, come to me. If you're scared, don't. <laughs> Stupid Marco is. Oh, and here we go. I just wanted to, you know, give him some heads up. And it turns out. Glenn, that when he did go on Marco's show, and we never did talk before his show, by the way, me and Vince, um, uh, he, he, from an MLM perspective, we're pretty much in alignment as far as the importance of retail sales. And, and that's what Vince claims, and I, I'm not doubting his claim, I'm just saying that's his claim, that he did a lot of retail sales. In fact, he did mostly retail sales when it comes to how much profit he made. Um, and so I don't think the average distributor needs to go to that extent. But he said, I think he said his, he was, he was um, when he did go on Marco's show, he said he had been selling Avon since he was, I think he said, 13 years old. Um, and, and so, you know, he goes way back. And, and obviously, Avon is one of those companies, especially in the past before the MLM model came into being. Look at the layers of YouTube videos that's happening right now. There's what you're watching on your screen. Then there's the, the primary window that we're looking at, which says part three, Julie Anderson interview. Then another layer deep says Paul Rockavallis, Australia's version of Dexter Yeager Amway. Then in, inside of that, G Glenn, you're hurting my brain with this formatting. Glenn, from now on, no more. Just use pictures. You, use the picture of Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles and flip back between them the way I do. Don't, don't do this anymore because this is, this is scaring me now. Um, that's all you could do because it was direct selling. There was no upline or downline. You made your money by how much you sold. And, and his 
I think parents and grandparents had been in MLM. So he had grown up in MLM. He was third generation, um, which of course got comments on Marco's channel that, oh, Vince, I feel so sorry for you to be, you know, third generation MLM. You must be such a miserable. By the way, Jared, did you see my Instagram DM? Holla at me about this weekend. Miserable person and, and all of this. No, he just was in a selling environment and it came naturally to him. So, you know, that's, but anyway, I'll, I'll stop there, Glenn. That was my first email, you know, um, you know, Talk to me first, and and, and uh, you know if, if you're too scared, don't don't email me back. You know and that was just kind of a psychological challenge. I want to see if if somebody's going to lean forward into that, or if they're going to back off and be actually scared to, to even respond to an email. You know how harmful can an email be to return? So um, that's kind of how it got started, Glenn. Did, did you want to talk about anything else um, with that particular email? Or I, I could go to the next email. Yeah, yeah, go to the next one, please, Scott. Okay, so the next one um, was. Uh, on October 8th. <laughs> Glenn just letting him bur bury himself. Glenn in the background making a salad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Scott. So I gave him three days, no response. And I said, Vince, you must really be scared of me. I can answer this question that you posed to Marco. Okay, so this was um, a question, again, that Vince put on Marco's live stream. And I think Marco hadn't seen any of his comments yet still. You know, Marco had just been passing over uh, the comments, um, and, and uh, he didn't notice Vince's question during his life. Sorry, dude. Sorry, Scott. I have 150 people watching right now, only 119 likes. And the chat, I mean, bro, between me paying attention to the shit I'm listening to in real time and reading the comments on the chat, it, it's impossible, especially during a debate. During the debate, there'd be like a few hundred people. I, I literally cannot physically read all the comments. What are you talking about? Live stream. Um, and so here's the question that Vince asked. Scott is so, um, like the idea of having any viewers is so alien to him that he can't comprehend how I don't read every single message and respond to every single message and comment, etc. Hey, Vince in the chat says 120 likes. Oh, thank you, Vince. Appreciate you, Vince. Aww. Stream that link in the chat. Marco on Marco's live stream. You know, Marco, I've seen all your video targeting. You should have said videos targeting, right? It's, it's plural. Now, when you have like a, just a Yahoo email, uh, it makes you extremely intelligent. And so you pick up things like this. When you have your own email, like Vince does, um, Vince at CaliberFitness.com, um, you're kind of stupid, and you don't understand when to use a plural uh, word in a sentence. Um, so I just want to kind of point that Am I hearing this motherfucker correctly? Did he say, you know what? Let me just listen to that again. Cause no way, no way he's dead ass. Yeah, it makes you extremely intense. I've seen all your video targeting, you should have said videos targeting, right? It's, it's plural. Now, when you have a, like a, just a Yahoo email, uh, it makes you extremely intelligent. And so you pick up things like this. When you have your own email, like Vince does, um, Vince at CaliberFitness.com, um, you're kind of stupid, and you don't understand when to use a plural uh, word. You know? How much is Yahoo paying Scott Johnson to say this shit? When you have a Yahoo email, when you have a Yahoo email, you're smart. But when you have a custom email that you clearly paid for and take care of to have some sort of brand unity... You're stupid. Can't make this shit up. I swear I wish I was like that talented of a like story creator that I could have just fabricated this whole thing. I couldn't have written characters better than Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles and uh, Dominic Izzo and Dale. And it's, it's truly amazing. It's unbelievable, frankly. The sentence. Um, so I just want to kind of point that out, right? That's kind of a red flag for me. When you have your own email, it, it just means you're probably not very bright. Um, so it says, I've seen all, all your video targeting MLM companies, which is all. So does that mean you think Peter is not very smart? Because Peter has a custom email. It's like Peter PMW at, at PMW Network Marketing Leads or some shit like that. Fine and dandy, but at no point have you recommended where someone should work at to make money or any options for those who wish to make honest money, what would you recommend? I think it's five question marks. Um, 
So, again, that was Vince's question for Marco. Okay, I'll answer it right now, Scott. Sorry to have offended you by not answering Vince's question. That had nothing to do with you. Uh, I've answered this before, and I'm pretty sure I said it in the debate, too. If not, let me say it right now. Literally any job. Literally any job. Literally go do anything. That is my real-world tangible advice for what to do aside from MLM. Literally anything else. And I told him that I can answer that question. And then after I quoted his question that he asked Marco, I said, but you have to debate it on my podcast with me, LOL. <laughs> Nobody has to do anything, Scott. LOL. Um, so that was the second email. Three days later, again, I got no response to the first one. Uh, Vince said, no, that's not true. I worked for Verizon when we owned Yahoo, so I know better. Let's go. Um, and, and I just had to assume he was scared because, you know, how harmful can it be to send somebody an email? I have to assume Vince, a guy who, if I had to guess, Vince, correct me if I'm wrong on the numbers, but you're probably, what, six foot three, 350 pounds? Vince is a fucking monster, Scott Johnson. Vince could eat you. What are you talking about? He's scared. What do you... If, if Vince and Scott Johnson met in person and Vince heard this shit, you know what would happen? It would be over so quickly. Live from Goon Headquarters in scenic Edmonton, Alberta, it's time for Goon News. Goon News! Just in, long time, always Marco arch nemesis, Scott Tex Johnson, dead <laughs> from picking a fight with a literal monster. Thank you. Can't make this shit up. Can't make this shit up. How could somebody be so in the matrix to not understand this? This guy is on another planet. This, Scott is up there on the space station according to both the audio quality and the lack of the, the leap in logic. I can't believe this. I can't believe you've done this. All right. So that's the second one, Glenn. Did you have any comments on that? I can go on to the next one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, for those of you who are watching this on my YouTube channel, M MLM is Fraud, which is my channel, Vince Nonsense. I'm now going to play Vince reading the emails, and we'll just compare sort of Vince's take on what... Oh, five... Okay, Vince says, 5'11", 235. I competed as a light heavyweight bodybuilder in the NGA. What is it? And as a heavyweight in the NPC. What is NPC? The only NPC I know is this one. Need something? Uh, I was also a corrections officer and bouncer, as stated in my LinkedIn. What transpired compared to Scott Johnson? All right, so now. What the? What the fuck is this? Glenn, are you fucking kidding me? What is this? Is a uh, at home business. <laughs> Oh, okay. The volume was just not matched well at all. So now, okay, now I guess we're jumping to Vince's video. Okay, let's skip this because we just literally watched this. We're filling in the blanks. Um, right, so let's, um, okay, here we go. Oh, I see. I see what you did there. I see what you did there, uh, Glenn. You're trying to create like a, a chronological storyline here with the videos by having Scott say what he said, then put in Vince's side. Okay, okay, okay. I'm with you. You've listened to Vince's explanation. Um, right, so let's, um, so yeah, Scott, I feel like... Not... Vince is a power bottom and top suspects. V unit, yep. Um, <laughs> what up, Trey Tino? Um, wow. Instead of considering that people don't want to talk to him, he tells himself they're scared so his feelings don't get hurt, literally. He could fold their clothes with them in them. So true doing yourself justice when you, you invite people onto your podcast like that. Um, Vince is obviously a guy. He, he identifies as being the home business king. So there's a fair amount of ego there. Um, so he would not 
appreciate you saying that you, he's scared of you. I feel like, I just feel like it's a bit of a tragedy because my, my view is this. You've got the most, the best knowledge of the Amway tool scam of anybody that I've ever spoken to. This is what I mean, Vince, by, Scott, by Glenn's ability to like stroke Scott's ego. Scott knows about the MLM tool scam, but there's not much to know. To be fair, there's not that much to know. Other people also know. What's that one guy's name? I forget his name. He did the whole documentary, the whole hour-long documentary earlier this year on the Amway tool scam and the cult of the tools and whatever. Job, you know, mission accomplished. Sean, Sean Munger, that's, that was his name. Sean Munger, shout out to Sean. The fact that Scott has done this radio show for over a decade every week talking about the same thing is fucking absurd. But you get people offside when you... Vince says, I can also take a metal frying pan and roll it with my hands. I did that as a party trick. Ah. When you um, invite them like that, I think Bam was another one. I think if, if you had a, been a bit nicer when you invited Bam on, he would have come on. And then, I mean, oh, we're talking about my friend Bam, yeah. Bam, what up? You're getting mentioned. Apparently, uh, by the way, Bam, there's a video uh, on this series called, uh, I, think, I think Glenn uploaded it, called Scott Johnson, Bam is a nothing burger. Yeah, here, right here. Bam, you, you're, you've made it into the lore of uh, Building Fortunes Radio versus Always Marco. Bam is a nothing burger. Hold on, I want to listen to this real quick. <laughs> but Julie Anderson is a nut job. Scott Johnson. <laughs> Julie Anderson is a nut job. Bam is a nothing burger. Vince is scared. Can't believe this. Let's listen. I, I don't necessarily like to talk about Marco, <laughs> but the idea that he had this guest and the guest was kind of trashing both you guys at the same time uh, leads me to say at least we'll give him a little bit of uh, radio show time. For, for a little bit of time as well, so. <laughs> Calling out the literal two biggest goons in the cult, right? Back to you, Scott. Yeah, and I have to make a comment too on Bam. I mean, the guy is so stupid. He's probably <laughs> more fun, yeah? Literally, Scott's only insult is that people are stupid. It's so funny. Make a comment too on Bam. I mean, the guy is so <laughs> I don't like talking about Marco. I love it. So true. The way he says he doesn't like talking about you without laughing, or he can't say it. Yeah, <laughs> Peter doesn't like to talk about Marco. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Yeah, go back. He, yeah, and I have to make a comment too on Bam. I mean, the guy is so stupid. <laughs> he, he's probably more. Well, he has to be more stupid than Marco because I've said this before. Marco is always stupid, and the only people that are more stupid than Marco are people that give money to Marco, which Bam has done. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, everybody, Streamlabs link in the chat because as Scott has admitted, nothing gets them more pissed off than when people donate to me. And anytime there is a, particular, a particularly bag heavy stream, it gets them so worked up that they always mention it on the follow-up episode that they do. Scott will be like, Marco did, a, Marco did a show on Wednesday night and made $500. And it just goes to show you how stupid the people are that donate to him. They get so fucking mad. I love it. I love it. That's honestly even better than putting that sweet, sweet, cold, hard cash into mommy's pocket. I'm mommy. Even better than that is knowing how much it bothers Scott and Peter. Mwah! That's the best part, truly. Fuck paying bills. Forget, forget paying my lawyer to, you know, keep me out of jail because the paid assassins are oh, every day coming at me. Forget it. Forget it. <laughs> Trey Tino. Trey Tino says, I'm so stupid. Yeah, Trey Tino, you're going to get mentioned on... Uh, I'm surprised Scott hasn't talked about some of the goons that were on uh, Multi-Level Misery Live. Thomas, I'm big, dumb, super smooth brain. So true. So true. <laughs> Bam, you got bodied. Legend says they're roasting you, Bam. <laughs> Peter has a Marco tattoo for sure. Uh, stoopy, stoopy. Bam is getting bodied. <laughs> Vince says, I've never heard of these people till last week. I think they're going to pester me for years. It's possible. Sam Bankman Fried in the chat. What up? Shout out to you, bro. Um, Vince should have gone on BFR. Yep. Legend Gaming has a lobotomy by that logic. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. 
I think this is the first time someone has called me stupid. I'm honored and so stupid at that. So true. But Bam comes across. He was on Marco's show, I guess it was Wednesday. Thank you, Scott Johnson. Always stupid, Scott Johnson. I mean, the guy is a total nothing. <laughs> Insulting like a three-year-old. Just such a limited vocabulary of words. Like, he is so stupid. He is a nothing. I mean, just his... His brain is barely functioning. Um, he said pretty much nothing that made much sense on, on Marco's show. He just kind of sat there and smiled, and he made a couple comments every once in a while. Yeah, yeah, because he's stoic, and we, we had a good time. That was a fun stream with Bam. The whole saga of Josh, we, the guy who brought us our food, we tipped him $100. That was so sweet. That literally made my whole week. Aww. Dude, that guy, Josh who we tipped $100 the night that we did that stream and we ordered Nando's and we had a nice, fun, silly goose time. Uh, dude, the text that that guy Josh sent to me, absolutely, let me find it real quick. What did he say? I posted it here in the Discord. Discord link also in the, uh, in the chat and the description. Uh, Josh, what did he say? <laughs> Come on, guys. Listen to this. Listen to this. This was so sweet. I, he said, thank you so much. He, he said, thank you so much. I was in a hard place with funds and you just saved me. God bless. Come on, bro. Aww. I give it. I, we give back. The cult gives back, you know. Every $100,000 you donate to the cult, I tip a food delivery driver $100. Deal? Deal or no deal? Uh, that was a fun stream, though. It, it made no sense. Um, and I did challenge him to come on the show um, because I was pretty sure he was going to turn me down, <laughs> which, you know, which is really my goal. It's, re it's your goal to get turned down? I was going to say, it never stopped you before knowing that people are going to turn you down. As a matter of fact, you wait till they, do, till they do turn you down to email them again. So fucking hilarious. Uh, no, Bobby, I haven't done a stream about uh, Cash and Austin yet, but I will. I have to be very careful, though, talking about that and the company they were with, so... Assassin Ting, you know. He is a pee-pee poo-poo head. So true. Bam says, Lamau, I'm not an MLM expert. My bad. I get bags the legal way. <laughs> Should have gifted him a PS5. Yeah. Um, to have people turn me down that, that I'm really not interested in. But Rejection fetish. This guy's so upside down and backwards. You know, he never responded to me. But that means he's scared. Or I was going to hit him up, but I, was, but I thought he wouldn't respond to me, which is really my goal because I'm not really interested anyways. Like, literally listen to this. Liter literally listen to this. Pretty sure he was going to turn me down, <laughs> which, you know, which is really my goal, um, to have people <laughs> turn me down that, that I'm really not interested in. But so your goal is to be turned down, meaning they're not interested in you, by people you are not interested in. Which brings us back to the beginning of why the fuck would you even hit them up in the first place? What is the grand scheme here? Literally, imagine brainwashing yourself. That's the craziest shit. There's a saying, lie to him, lie to her, lie to me, but never lie to yourself. Ooh, the worst lies are the ones we tell ourselves. That's crazy. It would be fun. Bam, come on my show or are you too scared? No response. I didn't even care anyways. Literally, literally like those... uh. Tinder horror story posts of like a guy will message a girl on Tinder be like, you're so beautiful. Two hours later, she doesn't respond. He's like, stupid fucking whore. I didn't care. Any <laughs> oh my God. Literally craziness. Fun to have somebody like that on the show um, just to, you know, basically let them know how stupid Marco is. I mean, Scott and Peter eat 14 hard boiled eggs each on video. Or are you too scared? It's, it's, it's it's incredible um, how dumb the guy is. But anyway, Glenn, uh, did you want to talk more about Vince or do you want to talk about uh, Stacey Bosley or anything else? I mean, you're our guest. It's your show. Peter, Peter has his notebook there. It's like the, top, the potential topics for the evening. Amway Tool Scam, Marco, Bam, Vince, Stacey Bosley, and that's it. Next week, next, next week he, just, he, just, he just erases them and writes them again next week. Glenn's still there? Oh, uh, he might have dropped off. Okay, he can't get back in now, right? No, he's still okay, because I'm making for 90 minutes. <laughs> Boomer tech. 
Vince in the chat says, you should play the non-functioning website video I played later on tonight. That got him pretty triggered, so I'll be hearing about that too. <laughs> I love it. Oh no! To piss off, let's see, to piss off Scott and Peter, here's my money, take my money. Let's go goons! Yes, yes. Is there an audio drop of... <laughs> is there a drop of... Uh... Let's go... Nah, I'll, I'll do that one. Let me see if I can oh, okay. think he called back. Can you, can you hear yeah, me now? Yep, we can, can you hear you me now. Back? Waiting for the Silica Valley hit piece. I mean, you already know what they're going to say. She's so stupid. I'm sure if somebody was to actually, like, damn, I'm, I've, I'm actually curious about this. Because Scott and Peter watch every single stream. Well, Scott watches every stream. Peter, I should say, listens to every stream because he's practically fucking blind talking about his glaucoma and shit. Um, imagine if somebody donated, like, $500 or $1,000. That person... Dude, Scott Johnson would find that person. Even if even if they donated using like a different name, like even if they donated using the name Pee Pee Poo Poo, actually that that's exactly what I want to happen. That way, on the next episode of Building Fortunes Radio, Scott can go on a 30 minute long angry tirade about someone who he can only address as Pee Pee Poo Poo. That would make my year. All right. Yep. Yeah. You're I'm, I'm a, I'm... I'm a bit insulted because um, if Marco's fans are all stupid, I'm, I'm literally Marco's number one fan. So that Aww. means that I'm, how stupid am I then? Thank you, Glenn. Aw, oh, you're so Aww. sweet. If they're all I stupid, know. I'm think you're this, fan. We how think you're money, how, much, how much money have you given Marco? I haven't given him any money, but I... Boo! I spent a lot of time talking about how amazing and great his videos are. I, I spent a lot of time... Trying to convince you guys. No one, no one in on planet Earth has spent more time trying to convince other people that Marco was fantastic than me. I'm, I'm definitely his number one fan because I, my, one of my goals in life is to convince you two that he's, a, he's amazing. So that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Literally giggling like little kids. Never gonna happen. <laughs> Pussy clap. If, 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 you're still not as stupid as the people that give you money, Glenn, so let me just be clear on that. All of this shit talking, and it begs the question, like, why don't they just have me on their show? I would do it. Scott, Peter, I promise, I promise, literally, internet pinky swear, I promise I won't bully you if I come on the show. And you can just delete it. Or, you know what, we can pre-record it. There. That way it's not live. How about that? We can pre-record it. Safe. Everybody's safe. Come on, dude. Come on. Cock coma. <laughs> yeah, good. Silicon Valley says cock coma instead of a glaucoma. <laughs> Me talking about them being like little kids. Literally. Literally. If you haven't given them money, you're not as stupid as the people that have given them money. Because to me, it's just totally stupid to give the guy money. But oh, hey, I, there's a lot I of stupid people that out there. You guys don't, don't think I'm the stupidest market fan. I, I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> what a great clip. What a great little just beautiful three-minute clip. Glenn, more videos like that, okay? If you're truly my number one fan, you'll give me more little little tidbits like that. Okay. Don't make less long videos if it's possible, because at that rate, you might as well just listen to BFR, which nobody wants to do. But little clips like that are really good. Come on. OK, so let's continue on with the with the Glenn's uh, Glenn's sequential coverage of this uh, <laughs> ongoing beef. Julie Anderson's another one. If you hadn't have called her a nut job um, before you spoke to her, then after you had a nice conversation, I feel like she would have come back multiple times. So. Can you see what I'm saying? Well, like, I, I, I do have to straighten out one thing. Not on your, on your uh, comment, Lynn, but I've yeah. heard others, some other MLM huns saying that I called her a nut job after she was on the show. I actually called her a nut job before she was on the show also. I just want people to understand um, that, that that happened. I wasn't being an asshole to her behind her back. I also did it behind her back before that happened. Is that an... I mean, that's... In Scott Johnson language, that's practically an apology. Um, but again... You know, the only thing I told Vince originally was, you know, email me back unless you're scared. It's, so but that's not the best I, way to go. How can you be scared of sending an email? Well, uh, I think if you had to just send a nice, polite, respectful email, and you, you've got to also acknowledge you're emailing somebody with a big ego. This, this is a person who sees himself as being the king, the guru, the ultimate king of home businesses. 
Um, so, you know, you need to sort of write to him in, in that way. Um, I just think if you had have been, you know, the, the approach was a little bit off. I would have, if you had to send a, a slightly more respectful email saying, I'd like to come on and discuss with you. I've, you've got a big following on, on YouTube and through your podcast. Let's have a discussion about this. I think you would have been more likely to get him on the, on the channel. And then that would have meant that his fans would have learnt the truth about the MA tool scam because let Glenn talking to Scott Johnson like he's a little kid and holding his hand through the process of just being nice, just having basic common courtesy. Can you believe it? We're listening to a grown man, Glenn, educate another grown man who's much older than him, Scott Johnson, about why people don't respect him or respond to him because he's rude. The, you're literally listening to like, this, this is literally a conversation you would have with a three-year-old kid. Like, well, maybe you would get cookies if you didn't hit and bite and scratch and cry. Literally. Let's be real. If you're 18 years of age and you're only listening to Vince, who's the home business king, and you're thinking about joining an MLM, Vince isn't going to tell them about the MY tool scam. Yeah, get, get, you know what I'm going to, you know what I'm actually going to do? Because I know Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles can do nothing about it. I am going to sell a, a floppy disk and CD-ROM boxed set of Building Fortunes Radio on tape, on audio. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through every episode, download it, burn them to a, to like, you know, put them into an iTunes file and burn them to CDs and make an entire Losing Fortunes Radio, not even CD, floppy disk anthology. And I'm going to sell them for money. And I'm going to profit directly towards my pocket. And they're going to get none of it. And you know what? I don't even think anyone even manufactures floppy disks anymore. So I might actually have to do CDs. But they're going to be so expensive. So expensive. And it's going to be organized by like year. Because those, I mean, they don't have seasons. They just do it every week. So, uh... Maybe I'll have to do CDs. Even CD, you know? Crazy. Literally crazy. I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too, right? <laughs> Scott, Scott's writing Julie's name in hearts in his notebook. So true. <laughs> so funny, Jennifer Watkins. Thank you for that comment. So crazy that Scott has kids, for sure. No way, a Vince don't know? Come on now. <laughs> A portion of my net worth. Best promo ever for my channel ever. I'm going to humiliate them for those gay jokes. We haven't even got to the part about the gay jokes, but I, I don't know if you're aware of this, um, Vince, but in, in the past, my spies have done research on both Scott and Peter, which is how I uncovered like the pictures that I have of Peter and the pictures I have of Scott. But throughout this digging, we found out um, that Scott, sorry, that Peter Mingle's daughter is gay. And yet they do so much gay bashing. Over the past three years, I've heard them do so much gay bashing. It's crazy. It's so crazy. And it's like, dude, Peter's daughter is literally like openly gay. Which is, you know, I'm not trying to drag her into this, which is why I like, haven't said her name or put her out there or anything like that. But Peter has an adult daughter who is gay. And yet they still are, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Thank you for that, Home Business King. Uh, Vince, whether you actually are the home business king is to be seen, but fuck it. Um, thank you for that. I appreciate you. <sighs> and truly is the best promo ever. I mean, come on, let's get the numbers up. So the, the 18 year old kid is less likely to join Amway and fall victim to the brainwashing materials of the Amway tool scam. Oh, Jennifer, you, Jennifer, you think I care about stealing the idea from you? <laughs> I'm already stealing the content from Scott and Peter. I'm, I'm, st I'm stealing from everybody. I don't give a fuck. Matter of fact, y'all are going to pay me for it. What the hell? What are you talking about? Thank you. Thank you again, Vince. CD's nuts. So true. Glenn, what the fuck is this? Glenn, what is this? If you just... There we go. You know, just, just change your approach a little bit. Well, I'm not going to do that, Glenn. That's not my personality. That's this is a strategy I have. Um, if if you're a strong person, you'll lean forward into that challenge. If oh my God, Glenn, ever so gently telling Scott to be kind and adjust his approach a little bit. Well, I'm not going to do that, Glenn. 
loser. If you're a weak person, you'll lean backwards. I'm looking for strong people. And so if you fail that test, then you fail that test. Now that doesn't mean- So you being a dick in email is a test? And if I don't wanna deal with your nonsense, I fail the test? I mean, literally a psychopath, all good. Put it on 45 black shellac. I got the 1928 hand cranked Victor Victrola. Lost fortune radio. <laughs> means the first and last test but you did fail that test because it's gonna be a new viral tiktok challenge the scott johnson challenge just go be as mean as fucking possible to somebody and then when they get upset tell them they lost you didn't lean into it um this is a tough thing to do to keep pushing and pushing against mlm scams and if you're not tough i don't want to work with you because you have to be tough work this is not work scott johnson people going on your radio show this is not work just to be able to stay in the game because you're going to get insulted left and right. I mean, I do all the time, uh, you know, on Narcos show on all these other anti MLM huns as well. And, and you have to be strong. And so if you're weak him literally bragging about insulting people online, <laughs> crazy. I want to weed you out at the beginning. I don't want to dance with you for a while because I used to do that. Right. I did that on uh, uh, savvy writes books uh, on her show. Um, I used to try to do a dance with people. And what I found out was every single one of them, and I did it several times, every single one of them, they just wanted to talk for a while and then go off and do something else. And I'm looking for people to want to do something. Oh, so you mean a regular human? That's called a conversation. They just want to talk for a while and then go do something else. Yeah! <laughs> Scott Johnson's literally a robot designed for the singular purpose of being a dick to people and, and talking about the Amway tool scam. There's no, the programming doesn't have other software written into it. No other programs. Like Peter, Peter and I have done this show every single week, say for just a handful for over eight years. That is so sad. That's who I'm looking for. I'm not looking for some fly by night person that wants to make a couple comments and go off and do something. So that's why I do that, Glenn. I do that so that I'm testing them to see if they're tough. And, and all I'm doing is saying, you know, don't write me an email back if you're scared. I mean, come on, how threatening is that? Well, it hasn't worked because he's now got his back up and well, has worked. Come onto the show, which I, I really think the tragedy because- <laughs> Eight years of staggering growth. Yeah, staggering in that there's no growth. If he, if but he it, it did work, man. It did, it did work. It, it, it not only weeded him out, but he went on Marco's show and now I've got all kinds of nice, interesting things to talk about, about the land. <laughs> His vocabulary, once again, Scott Johnson's vocabulary strikes again. I've got a lot of nice, interesting things. Bro, nice. Literally the one word that my teacher in grade two said, don't use nice as a descriptive word because it's so basic. Nice for good things, stupid for bad things. Once you've mastered those two very difficult uh, literary devices, you will understand how to communicate like Scott Johnson. If you like something, say it's nice. If you don't, it's stupid. Got it? I know it's going to take some practice. I mean, about, um, about Vince. And, and so it worked splendidly. I am so happy with the way it worked out. Okay, so, all right. So we, we disagree on your so insecure. approach. That's fine. Um, let's, maybe, maybe let's move on to um, what you think about some of the things that Vince said. Um, can I start <laughs> with the... My, you, want me to, you want me to do a couple more e emails? Because I did do a couple more emails, Dan. <laughs> Stagnant, not staggering, right? Yep. Hey, hey, um, my, uh, if it's small, it's mini inch. Yes, Johnny. So true. You're obviously not going to take my advice. My advice would be to have a less confrontational approach in the email. But clearly, you're not going to listen to my advice, which is... Why would, you, why would Scott even want anyone to email him back? Because if they don't have a Yahoo email, he already is going to think they're stupid. Which is fine. Uh, but I, yeah, I tell Vince too. I'd, I'd love to see Vince come on to Building Fortunes Radio. I'd love to see BAM go on to uh, Building Fortunes Radio. <laughs> Bam would body these youths. I think it'd be a really, really good episode. Um, I thought the episodes that you did, me, you, and Julie Anderson, and Peter did on Building Fortunes Radio was really, really interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I think when you're calling people a nut job, it's, they're not likely, a lot of people aren't going to want to come and talk to you on, on the internet if you're calling them a, a nut job. Honestly, guys, at this point, I literally think the only way for me to get on Building Fortunes Radio is to like email Scott from another email account and tell him that I'm one of the goons and get on the show and put on like a fake voice and then like halfway through reveal that it's me.
but they're going to hang up immediately. I'm not even going to get a word in. It's going to be pointless. Bam says, I'm just going to go on. I'm going to go on and just be a nothing burger. I dare you. Just go waste their time. And that's fine with me. I got plenty of guests. No problem at all. Nope. The first thing you should say, Bam, is why did you call me stupid? That's what you should say. See if he crumbles under the uh, pressure of you being on the phone at the same time. There's not many guests uh, uh, as big as Julie Anderson. Julie Anderson's got a fairly large um, audience. It's not very big. It's not very <laughs> big at all. There's a lot of YouTubers with much smaller audiences than Julie Anderson who would uh, love to have that sort of audience. And that sort of I'm thing. pretty sure Julie Anderson has like a like six-figure-plus following on TikTok. I follow her on TikTok. Hold on, let me check because I don't know exactly. Follow, go ahead, follow Julie Anderson on TikTok. Let me see. Julie... Here she is. How many does she have? 219,000 on TikTok, bro. She's crushing on TikTok. Rich. I'm good now. You, well, even the Nako's small time with, with Upless, as you would say, only 88.3K. So you're a hard man to please, bro. No, I'm easy to please. If you're tough, then I'll work with you. If you're a wimp, I don't even want to work with you. Okay. Again, first of all, this is not working with each other, Scott Johnson. But me sticking out this beef diligently for three years, that's not me being tough. Me prank calling you guys constantly, even though you've harassed me, like even though you called the literal American border security on me to try to get me to miss my flight to Washington back in March and was almost successful. And me laughing it off and shrugging it off. That isn't me being tough, bro. Let, I just want to play. I just want to talk on your on your radio show. That's not working together. I, at this point, fuck it. I'm just trying to have some fun with you. You know? Damn. Crazy. Bam says I'm going to have I'm going to make them have to edit out a part of the show. Impossible task for them, right? They still record on on, on film on tape. It's not very big at all is a drop. Yeah, somebody timestamp that. <laughs> Easy to please, AEO. What up, even Stevens? So it, it, it helps me manage my time better. By by saying, well, what about that? We're talking to someone who you think is a wimp or is a wimp. I don't know until they either. I don't. I don't know if they're wimp. Whether they until they either answer or don't answer. I don't know the answer to that question until they respond. Right, let's, let's say if you talk to them and then they turned out to be a wimp, it would still be a good result because you could then explain to their audience the damaging. Sorry, this is, when I went to go look at Julie Anderson's TikTok to plug it for you guys, it's, it was my first time checking TikTok today, and my vertical that I posted about the mayor is kind of blown up a little bit, 27, 27.8K views. Um, damn, I'm just seeing it for the first time. Crazy. Problem of the Amway tool scam, the Amway brainwashing tools that are a major, major part of why, pe why so many people get brainwashed by this evil industry. Um, but yeah, all right. So how, let's just. Well, I mean, to me, even the largest, even the largest anti MLMer out there is not that big in the big picture. In, in the big scheme of things, even the largest anti MLMer is small potatoes compared to the population. I'm pretty big. So you know, to me, there's no big anti MLMer. They're all small. I'm pretty big. Uh, in, yep. in the big picture. I'm pretty big. So, uh, and, and by the way, Glenn, you're not the first one to make this recommendation to me. So you know, it's yep. it's nothing. I mean, that's what Savvy spent her whole. Well, it was an hour and a half, two hours <laughs> trying to convince me. Uh, so uh -huh. it, I, I appreciate the input. But Why does he keep bringing up the savvy debate? He got absolutely massacred in that debate. Here's 191 Canadian after tube tax, $0 for Scott, for Peter and Scott. Actually, Astro, I'm pretty sure YouTube takes 30%. So it would be, they would take even more than nine cents. But thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, appreciate that, Astro. Um, but I'm not going to take it. Okay. You, you make a good point. Right. I'll, I've, uh, I'll, I'll raise the white flag on that one. I'll give up on that. Um, let's, can we go to um, what we... You want, you want to go to the next email? I, I wanna, uh, yeah, yeah, finish the email off, and then, and then I want to speak about... Even Stevens says, Marco looking scrumptious. Thank you, Even Stevens. Telling your husband. All good. Yeah. Vince is... Um, the, uh, for a man who is meant to be an authority, the king of home-based businesses, his incredible lack of research on you and on me and confusing us and getting us mixed up. I find it absolutely extraordinary. Well, we Thank you, Astro.
do sound pretty similar, don't we, Glenn? I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> <laughs> and anyone, anyone who knows anything about you knows you wouldn't have an, a channel called MLM is fraud because you're of the belief that it's not fraud when it's done right. So if you know anything yeah. about Scott Johnson, Johnson, you know that MLM is fraud is not Scott Johnson's channel. Right. So, so I'll finish up. I'll finish up the emails real quick, then we'll get yeah. into that topic. That's a, that's a great right. topic. Um, so my previous email was October 18th, that I just you know, read out. The next one I wrote, it was October 26th, right? So we're talking, what, over a week later? Uh, I said, Vince, it's a waste of time to IM Marco when you could talk with me instead. It's hard to believe that you're this scared of me. That was my next uh, email. Um, and then my last email to him, which was the day of, and it was a few hours before, um, Marco's next live stream, because by then, uh, you know, Marco had realized that Vince was trying to get on the show, and, and, and uh, you know, Marco likes to take on all challengers. So he, um, you know, so it, by this time, I know that they had already set up to um, have Vince on the show on that evening. On, on This is now November 4th. Okay, so this is what, uh, over a week after the previous email. Okay, so here's my email to... Hello, Bam, I'm pretty big. So true. Hung, drawn, and quartered on Savvy. Yeah, hung, drawn, and quartered on Savvy's channel, but he want, wants to talk about tough. On oh, God. Uh, Vince, on the day of, he was going to be on uh, Narco's show. Uh, I said, Vince, be sure to ask Narco, I actually said Marco, about his cocaine dealing, quote unquote, career. And then I put the link to the Rumble story. And if you go to rumble.com and you, and you put in text, text, T E X, T E X, all one word, um, this video will pop up that Marco made. Um, and he's taken down, of course because he's trying to remake himself. LOL, I've been live streaming on this channel for four years, and for the first like three years of that, I was streaming three nights a week, and, and none of it was about MLM specifically. I only, this year, 2023, decided to focus specifically on anti-MLM content. Before, I would just react to like random videos and have a silly goose time and like do food challenges and stuff on my stream. My streams would always go unlisted. I never published the streams. Literally, we're talking like over a thousand live streams that I've done easily. What's, th I mean, three a week for three years. Think about that. So for Scott to say that this one stream that I did, which he's talking about, which you can go watch, for him to say that this one stream that I did, that I've deleted it as though I'm trying to hide it, it's like, motherfucker, I never posted it. I never posted any of them. The fuck? Um, and he talks for like an hour and a half, two hours, whatever it is, with him and his buddy, Philip, um, who were cocaine dealers. And, and I mean, it's obvious. <laughs> you can go listen to it. That's not what it says. But I mean, by now you probably get the idea that Scott and Peter have their own uh, view of the world. So take it with a grain of, uh, take it with a grain of cocaine. That, uh, that Marco admitted to being a cocaine dealer. And so I just wanted Vince to know the character of this person that he was going to go on his show. Um, and that was the last email I had with Vince. <laughs> Remember when Peter had the cinematic Shakespearean performance of a lifetime breakdown episode when Scott went to the Trump rally? That changed me. That was actually crazy. Peter Mingles did a solo episode once of the Scott Johnson show. Why would you just not sit it out? Just sit that one out for the day. Why would you even do an episode at that point? And uh, he was padding the runtime so bad, like he played the intro song twice at the end just to like fill the time. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking funny, dude. <laughs> okay. Um, what kind of laugh is that? Scott sounded like an empty bottle flying down the hallway. <laughs> so fucking funny. Character of this person that he was going to go on his show. Um, and that was the last email I had with Vince. Um, that, and I never had any response via email from Vince. So um, that's the last of it. Uh, if you want to make any comments on those last couple of emails, Glenn, or if you wanted to get off into uh, the, the experts that. Uh... Thank you, Jennifer. She says, Aren't Mar are Marco's guns even legal in Canada? Come on, you see that scratch right there? I've, I'm afraid if I flex too hard, it's going to tear open again. Glenn envisions himself to be. Yeah, um, yeah, I think I've made my, um, my feelings clear on that one. I don't think it's the right way to approach it. You disagree, so let's leave it at that. Let's move on to what you. what. Can I start with what I, I made of um, Vince's appearance on Always Marco? Okay, now we got to go to the next episode, I guess, here. Um, thank you, Sev. Scott and Peter are anti-MLM? No, they're not. They say they're anti-MLM, but they're literally, it's just, a, it's just a ruse. It's just a front. Okay, part two. Scott Johnson and Always Marco emails to Vince Goodrum on anti-MLM. All right, let's check it out. Here we go. About what I made of um, Vince's appearance during 
the debate with Marco. Here, they're going to make fun of him for being gay and shit now, I bet. He played the song five times in total. Hilarious bug. Yeah, Scott, uh, Peter on that solo episode literally had a mental breakdown. It was crazy. When he came in between the songs to sell, tell us he needed to pad the show time. <laughs> well, just do a shorter episode or don't do an episode at all at that rate. What fucking software are they using where you set how long it's going to be at the beginning and then if you go over, it cuts you off? What kind of madness is that? Just do a literal live stream like I do and just end it when you want to end it, bro. Yeah, go right ahead. The, the first thing that really stood out to me was the fact that Vince said, he said the most important part of the whole interview was when Vince said that he believed the ML, MLM failure rate to be between 70 and 80%. Across. Silica says, I would use my life savings 10 years before I died to direct a play of the disintegration of Peter. Oh, I'm with you. I got, we're going to do a donor goal for that for sure. <laughs> they use Microsoft Paint. So true. They do stream this with Microsoft Paint. Across the industry. Now, this is a man who is meant to be helping people who want to start a home-based business. And the most common form of a home-based business is a multi-level marketing company. And he doesn't even know what their failure rates are. I mean, I find that absolutely extraordinary. Um, if you are truly an expert on home-based businesses, if you're the king of them, the guru, then you should know these sort of statistics and these facts and data points back to front. And Vince has got absolutely no idea at all. Now, it's very, very well documented that across the entire industry, there's a 99 point something, between 95 to 99.5 to 99.8. And it's been that way since the beginning. And Vince, Vince just has no idea. And then when he was confronted with these facts, he then said, and I think this really sums Vince up, as long as I'm making money, I don't care. Just think about that. A man who is on the internet telling people that he is the guru and he is here to help you. If you're wanting to start a home-based business, listen to me, I can help you. Saying that he does not care if over 99% are losing as long as he is making money. That to me yeah, that, I have to say, I think you're, I think you're taking a couple things out of context. I, I do, Vince, I will say, you know, I love you, but I do think that was kind of fucked up. The fact that you don't care if other people are losing as a direct result of the business model of the company you're in. But as long as you're making money, it's fine. I think that's a bit, uh, what's the word, misanthropic of you. There, Glenn. One is, um, he did say, as long as I'm making money, I don't care about anybody else. But he was saying that in the context of MLM, where he was doing a lot of selling, and he noticed yeah. that a lot of other people were doing a lot of recruiting, and, and he didn't really care that they were losing as long as he was winning, which, which was true. Uh, they, they were losing money, and he was making because he was doing a lot of retailing. Um, and, and so it's not quite, and he also said, by the way, when you talk about the fact that he um, was, was, uh, was, oh, I just lost my train of thought there. Uh, it, it was another related aspect of what you were just talking about. Um, it'll come back to me, but go, go ahead. But Silica says, I had the most vivid image of him, Peter, naked in a dark basement with a single broken light bulb illuminating his body in shrimp shape, hugging an old corded phone. So true. I just wanted to point that out. That, that, was, that was in relation to him being an MLM, and he was doing a lot of selling, and most of the other people were doing a lot of recruiting, and therefore they were losing a lot of money. Um, uh, now, his, also, it just came back to me. So when he said 70 or 80%, and, and Marco said, no, I've got evidence that it's 99.7 or whatever the number is, um, he said, well, I'd like to look at that. He was open to looking at that information. He didn't just shut it down. Uh, he just wasn't aware of it. And he says, I'm open-minded. I'll look at it. Send me, this, send me the information you have, and I'll look at it. Now, I happen to not agree with that statistic, um, but we've gone over that before. Uh, How do you not agree with literal facts? Literally, listen to him. I don't agree with that statistic. It's, it's a literal statistic, bro. What do you mean? It's not fake news. Um, but anyway, I just want to sort of point that out because it's a little, the context is important to me. Uh, it, anyway, that's, that's uh, my opinion. LOL, you didn't recontextualize anything. You, it happened exactly as you both described. Of, of those statements. Go right ahead. But there's, I mean, there's a couple of parts to this. The first part is the fact that for years he's been giving people as the business king, the home business king advice on MLM. Now, you can't give the right advice if you don't know, know what the six are, if you don't know what the likelihood of success is. If somebody was a franchise king, for example, and I was to go to him and say, what do you think of me buying a McDonald's franchise compared to a Subway franchise? He would tell me, here are the statistics. This percentage, is, percentage of McDonald's succeed. This percentage of Subway succeed. This is the startup. So simple. These are the ongoing costs. 
he would know all the data back to front and he would then give me all the information I would need to make. Sucks. Scott believes in alternative facts. So true. Scott believes in Scott Johnson facts. We're almost at the 300 mark of this donor goal. I really was not expecting that. Thank you guys so much. Moving is a bitch. It's very expensive. Um, this laptop was very fucking expensive. So really appreciate any any donos. Um, they're going to say, of course, that I'm begging for donos on my stream. But I, I mean, this is the reality of YouTube, bro. YouTube doesn't pay uh, like crazy from views. And uh, even in my case, when you go viral, in my case, going viral is a double-edged sword because I'm going to go viral and I'm going to make money off whatever goes viral. But the more viral a video is, the more likely that I'm going to get sued over that video. And uh, I'm not saying that that has or hasn't happened to me before. But if you've been watching me for even six months, you know that um, there are some companies who are primarily in America who may take issue with some of the content that I post and want to uh, you know, pursue some sort of vendetta against me. So uh, anywho, yeah, I really do appreciate it, you guys, because, uh, you know, I, I don't have sponsors on this channel. You know that uh, sponsors don't want to sponsor me because I'm a liability and they don't want me to they don't want to be, you know, they don't want to have me do a sponsorship for them in a video that blows up, but then gets taken down because I got sued. So sponsors are out of the question. I don't have liability insurance for my for my channel because no insurance company wants to insure me. Why? Because as soon as they take a look at my channel and they see what I do, they go, oh, he talks about MLMs. They know how fucking lit litigious MLMs are. Insurance companies do their fucking research. You, you see, there's literal, there's an entire meme subculture about how ruthless insurance lawyers are at like not wanting to pay out. They will use trickery and black magic to not pay out claims. That's that's their business model. You pay them to insure your stuff and they fight tooth and nail to not pay out a claim when you file one. Um, so they don't want to insure me. Uh, advertisers don't want to advertise with me. So no protection and no shield and no sword. You know, just these, baby. No, but for real, no shield and no sword. So it's all just you guys. It's all just the goons. So I really do appreciate it. And um, yeah, helping me recoup these these costs so that I can uh, get out of this current place that I live and and hopefully sleep soundly for once. The best possible decision. Now, if a young person went to Vince or even an old person went to Vince and asked him, what do you think of the MLM industry? Because he doesn't know there's a 99 point something failure rate, he is not able to answer the question correctly. Um, he thinks there's a 70 or 80 percent chance and he and he blames that on the distributors doing the wrong thing, the distributors ruining it with, you know, by only focusing on recruiting, not selling. Um, and and, and this, I think a second point to that is, um, it's amazing to me that we talk about MLM when it's done right. I'll, I'll put it another way. If you have a look at the history of MLMs, the only people that have become millionaires from it, multi-millionaires, are people like Dexter Yeager, who have done two things created a massive, massive downline and started a tool scam. Now, when Vince was doing it, he was doing it the wrong way to become rich because he wasn't working on a tool scam and he wasn't working on building a huge downline. He was instead going to trade shows and selling products for a commission, a very, very small commission. Now, nobody has ever gotten rich, let alone built, built what he says on his page, building an empire from home by selling MLM products for a small commission. So he was going about building his empire the wrong way. You can argue that he was selling, doing MLMs in a more moral fashion. It's more moral to sell products than to recruit people and sell the dream nonstop. But to become a multimillionaire like Dexter Yeager, or just to get Dexter Yeager, but you know, just to earn a- This is true what Glenn is saying. If you do want to become rich in an MLM, you have to deceive people en masse and, do, and you have to do it knowingly. You have to be willing to do it. High wage. So what he was doing was wrong. And that's why he stopped doing it and went back to other jobs like his telemarketing jobs and his other sales jobs. But point in time has been ever built an empire. It is just, this guy's a fake. I happen to not agree with looking at factual proof anyway. Back to you, Peter, right? 
Listening to a grown man who does MLM for a living talk about Marco's ethics is chef's kiss. Hilarious. <clears throat> Vince says in the chat, and I respect your uh, willingness to change your mind, Vince. Vince says, I did read the FTC report, so I will admit that 99% fail. You win, Marco. It's not a, honestly, I don't even, I'm being genuine here. I don't even care about me winning and going, ha, gotcha. I want people to be aware of these facts so that as a society, we can stop looking at MLM as a business. It is not a business. You know, sitting at a slot machine that has an 80% loss rate is not a business. And 80% is a lot better than 99% loss rate. Even 50%, flipping a coin is 50%. Flipping, sitting and flipping a coin is not a business. You know, a 50-50 gamble is not a business. It's a very risky gamble still. So, you know, that's what I want people to understand. Yeah, fatality. Guru. I, I can't think of a, a better example of a fake guru than this man, really. Um, building, building empires from the comfort of your own home. Now, any person that believes that is in trouble. What, what do you guys make of that? Well, I, I think... You know, I mean, put aside the fact that he calls himself the home business king, you know, um, to me, if you're doing retail sales, you're doing MLM the right way. Now, you don't have to do as many sales as, as uh, Vince was doing. Um, you can balance the recruiting and the selling between you and your downline. And, and that's really the way, in my view, MLM was meant to be. Uh, he went and did more retail sales. That's good for him. I'm not against retail sales. And, and I, I wouldn't compare what he did with retail sales to Dexter Yeager because Dexter Yeager was a complete fraud. I mean, he made tons of money, just like all the other big kingpins do in Amway, but they make most... Look at this comment on my TikTok about Emergy Sohi. Uh, talking about the, the mayor. Okay, I guess it's responding to somebody else. But they said, listen how crazy people are on the internet. I've run into him, the mayor, at lots of events and actually, and actually chatted with him. He seems nice. I think you've drunk the Kool-Aid because, and because he's a liberal, you hate him. They said that to another person in my comments who literally did not indicate whether they were liberal or conservative either way. So crazy. Most of it from the tools and then the other part of it, the much smaller part, the Amway part, is mostly their downline distributor purchases, which is an illegal pyramid. And, and so in both cases, most of their money, whether it's the tools or Amway, is illegal money. And the FTC hasn't gone after them, which is very disappointing. But I'm not surprised, given the Neora decision and, and how inept the FTC obviously... But Scott, if that's the case, and you also recognize that every other MLM is, is copying their sauce from Amway, what makes you say you disagree with the 99% loss rate? You just disagree just for the sake of disagreeing and being a contrarian, huh? Obviously is. Um, and their so-called experts like Stacey Bosley, I mean, it's not a surprise that they're not going after Amway now that I reflect on the New York uh, lawsuit. But I, I can't say that he was doing it wrong just because he was doing it legitimately. Um, so he, he was doing it in a way that n nobody has ever built an empire, which is what he's talking about on his channel. Nobody has ever built an empire doing it the way that he was doing it. Nobody has ever become rich doing it the way that he was doing it. So from the standpoint of if you wanted to become rich, which is why he was doing it, he was all about making money. And he said himself, he doesn't care if everyone else loses as long as he wins. He was doing it yeah, the wrong way because he did not, uh, clearly didn't understand how it worked. He, he, he well, thought that he could become rich from MLMs by, retail, by selling these products and getting commission on them. That's, that's highly, he was highly, highly misguided. You can argue that this is the document here that Vince is referring to. The case for and against multi-level marketing by John Taylor. Rest in peace, John Taylor. This is a full, you can find just this page, which is right here. See www.ftc.gov slash slash blah, 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 blah. So this is right on the FTC's website. So the FTC acknowledges that it's a scam with a 99% loss rate. And at the same time, allows them to operate as legitimate businesses until otherwise proven. But the problem here is that every single one of them, if, if the resources were allocated to investigate them, would be proven to be a pyramid scheme if they investigated it properly and didn't fumble the bag like in the New York case that Scott loves to gloat about so uh, obnoxiously. But yeah, I mean, you can also, this is chapter seven, as it says here. So you can read the full thing. It's many, many pages long. Um, but it's so thorough. It's so thorough that talks about 
how it's designed. It, it is not a matter of beating the odds. It is by design made this way for people to lose money. Said that though, Glenn. I, I don't think I don't think he ever said I'm going to become rich on retail sales. He said, you know, I made. I think I think they asked him, and he said um, he made the maximum of twenty thousand dollars a year um, through MLM retail sales. But he also, uh, at the same time. He said he also was doing direct sales and he had a job. So he had three sources of income. MLM was one of the three. Uh, yep. He was making, again, I don't disbelieve him. I'm just saying it's his claim. I can't prove it. But he was making most of his $20,000 a year from retail sales, as well as his other direct sales company um, and, and his job. So to me, that's a hustler. He's a very good salesperson. Well, let's give credit where credit is due. He's a very good salesperson. He's very good at working jobs. So where does this building empires nonsense come from? Where does this being the home business king, being able to get onto YouTube and advise people on how to become uh, a business person, an entrepreneur, how to have your own um, home business? He's got no record, no history of it. All he talks about is telemarketing, selling products in an MLM for a small commission and having sales jobs. Well, where, well, where it's all what, I, it's what I call fluff, right? That, that's advertising fluff. You puff yourself up, you make yourself really like you're a guru and, and, and you expect people to flock towards you. Um, and it's, it's salesmanship. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It certainly is not as big as Jaeger, but Jaeger was, was really doing it wrong because he was doing it illegally, both the tool scam and the lack of retail sales. Um, and, and this guy was doing legitimate retail sales. How can you say, you know, that he was doing it wrong? It, it doesn't make any sense. Dex, Dexter Jaeger had more business sense than what Vince does. Vince is, Dexter Jaeger used to rent out, Vince, Dexter Yeager was a risk taker. He, he invested money in a tape machine, very expensive at the time. He invested money in renting halls, taking risk. He was a risk taker. He was a genuine entrepreneur. <laughs> LOL, and Paz fluffed these nuts. So true. If you look up. He was a scam artist, Glenn. Glenn, he was not an entrepreneur. He was a scam artist. Dude, how sick would that be? Uh, somebody in the chat said, who said this? I just saw it. Somebody in the chat said, uh, they should put, uh, Shoe Murphy, they should put their show on the new Grand Theft Auto radio. Wow. Can you imagine? That actually, there actually is enough Losing Fortunes radio content to be its own GTA radio station. I would drive around in GTA listening to BFR. That's hilarious. We heard you need a sponsor. Yeah, who you with? Raid. Raid Shadow Pussy. Yeah, exactly. So funny. Mm-hmm. All right, he's a scam artist. Dexter Yeager did not have better business sense. He had better business scam sense. He did not have better business sense. There's no way you can say that. Because when you're running a scam, it's not a business. It's a scam. It, or at least it's a business scam. You know, it, it, LOL, even Stevens facts. Scott puffing himself up by boasting about being in the Navy during peacetime. Ooh, got him. Bars. It does have elements of being a business. But it's a scam, and there's no way you can compare Jaeger to Vince because Vince was actually doing things legally. Also, real quick question for you guys in the chat, all 141 of you, even though nine, nine people left when I was in the bathroom, so rude. Um, Trey Tino alerted me to the fact that there is a mission in the video game Hitman 2 where you assassinate an MLM leader at one of their events. You like join this MLM and then assassinate the head guy of an MLM company. I did not know about this. I'm amazed that nobody told me about it before a few days ago when Trey Tino told me about it. But he recommended that I download this game and play this mission live on a stream. Um, and I just wanted to know, like, you know, if that's something you would be interested in. I've done gaming like once or twice in the past on this channel. And I find it, I found it very hard to like, pay attention to the game and the chat and like say my own thoughts about it. But if you would be interested in, in that, uh, let me know. Maybe I'll make an actual community post poll for people to choose. But I mean, who, I mean, who cares? It's for one stream. Who gives a fuck? Even if it flops, who cares? So I would be, I'd be very interested to see that. Uh, Trey Tino told me about it, but I know you guys are going to say yes because you're here but then it's like sometimes people say yes and then i go do the stream and there's like you know it, it flops so who cares we'll see we'll try it we'll try it <clears throat> fluff 
says Patrick Willis, it's not fluff, it's just lying. Fluff is me bragging about how talented of an artist I am. Fluff is not me saying my art is 100% invincible when it is in fact not. Yeah, that's true. Making a little bit of money. Jaeger was making a lot of money, but doing it completely. When do they talk about Vince being gay? Legally. So uh, I, I don't. I don't think there's any purpose in, in comparing how much money they were making because one of them was a scammer and the other one was doing legitimate retail sales. So I, I, I don't get that argument. To me, to Vince is a poor man's version of Dexter Yeager. He would love to be like Dexter Yeager, but he doesn't speak as well. Dexter Yeager was an incredibly good public speaker. He I disagree with that, Glenn. I don't think Vince is like Dexter Yeager. I think Vince, is what, I think Vince was misinformed, but even the fact that Vince was willing to look at other information and not be so closed off, I think is reasonable, especially considering he says that he's a third generation MLMer. I think that's actually very open-minded of him. Dexter Yeager was an absolute fucking psychopath who probably ruined more lives than most of the historical figures we talk about when we think of who ruined thousands of people's lives. And, uh, you know, you want to talk about a wannabe Dexter Yeager? Talk about somebody like Alex Morton today. That, that gentleman is somebody who I think is uh, a, a wannabe Dexter Yeager who, in terms of current living MLM scammers, Alex Morton has to be at the top of my list um, because he's already done so much damage in his career, with, starting with Vima being the face of this young people's revolution uh, and really, you know, leveraging Facebook when Facebook was a new thing to scam thousands and thousands of college students into Vima. And uh, the fact that he's still relatively young, like he's still in his 30s and like Bob Proctor was a mentor of his, that, that really scares me to think about Alex Morton for the next 60 years doing this type of stuff really, really um, doesn't sit right with me. So I would disagree on the assessment that Vince is a wannabe Dexter Yeager. Not true. He'd get up on that stage in front of stadium people, and he would he was like a appreciate you, Giselle preacher. He had the he had the crowd. You know, they were in they they were just in rap. They couldn't it, the the way that people re would react to Dexter Yeager is the same way that a teenager would would uh, react to their um, the rock star who's their idol. They would get that excited. He would get up there and he would preach, just like a preacher um, at church. Um, but uh, the, the the selling of the tapes, I mean, it was misleading. It was dishonest. I don't think that was an illegal business. It was, it was you could maybe argue it was misleading. It was a scam. But I think legally that was a legal business. Um, and the Amway side of it was you know, a scam and it should have been shut down. But yeah, to me... Um, this guy is just a, a very, very poor imitation of Dexter Yeager. I mean, Yeager at least had, he wasn't lying or bluffing about creating an empire. This guy is lying. There is no empire with this guy. Cheerio, Katie Putin. Nonsense. Um, there was a part where he was talking to Marco in the, in the interview where he talked about buying a trailer and living in a trailer. He got, one minute he's talking about living in a trailer, the next minute he's talking about building an empire. Helping, I can help you build an empire. It's, I mean, it's just bizarre, really. Uh, and I, I feel really, really sorry for... I know that he's got 3.58k subs. I know that there's a high percentage of them are very young kids, you know, 18 to 21, very ambitious, but also very naive. And they're taking this guy on as gospel and they're listening to what he's saying and he's given them nothing. He's given them no useful advice, business advice, life advice. Um, he's scamming them. He's trying, you know, it's, it's really, really bad. Um, well, which MLMs do you think um, Ben supports? He doesn't support any of them, but he doesn't know enough about them to be on there as the home business king. The majority, I don't know what the percentages are, but of all home businesses, MLM is the most common form of home business. So if you're going to be educating people on home businesses, you must know the most common type of them back to front. It would be like if you were a franchise, ex a franchising expert who was going around educating people on franchises and not knowing what McDonald's was. Well, you need to know, if you're going to educate people on franchises, you must know all the franchises back to front. You must know the laws back to front. You must know the data and how many succeed and how many fail back to front. And if you're going to, again, if you're going to be a home business educator, you need to know about home businesses. And this guy doesn't know about them. How are, how is Glenn and Peter and Scott still disagreeing at this point? That's what I want to know. I'm skipping through this. I'm skipping through this. Let's watch part three.
The business king confuses Scott Johnson and MLM is fraud. Oh, go look at this. And he's talking about Scott Johnson, and he's bringing up Glenn's website. I'm like, wait a minute. This guy says he's done research, and he's listened to many. Here we go. They're going on the offensive now. This is Peter talking. Of Marco's videos, and he's been studying this sort of stuff. He's, he claims he's not, a, he's not an expert yet, but he's done plenty of research, and he's been researching this guy, Scott Johnson, and he's pulling up MLM is fraud as far as the YouTube channel. I'm like, he doesn't even realize... It's Glenn's channel. And I'll let you talk about that in a second, Glenn. And then the funniest thing, this is the funniest thing. I got to chuckle out of this one, Scott. He's talking about Scott Johnson. Then he mentions my name, which is still Peter Mingles. <laughs> which is still Peter Mingles. And he says, I don't even know who this Peter Mingles guy is. And I'm like, how the hell could you be on Marco's channel and tear it into Scott Johnson <laughs> And not know who Peter Mingles is. <laughs> Peter Mingles being offended that Vince didn't know who he was. Damn. This, that right there, that right there is so gratifying to me to hear, Scott, to hear Peter say that. Because this is the closest thing I've ever got to Peter acknowledging that the only reason anyone knows his name is because of me. I love it. Are you, like, did you just have, like, a brain seizure? Are you fucking nuts? Or are you completely identifying that you are a rookie? Now, he's a big guy, meaning big, like, he's physically big. Big, strong guy, big, great genes, that guy. He sounds like, I bet you if he was your neighbor, he'd be a, a nice guy. He's gay, that means nothing. But he, I hate to say it like this, most gay people that I know are pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's dropping that bar down pretty low. So Vince, you're giving gay guys a bad rap. Because you're saying stupid shit. So having said that, Vince... Is Peter like, that's not how you be gay. Let me show you. <laughs> ...is delusional. Maybe he has some mental illness, I'm not sure. Hold on, that's a drop. I just realized. That's a drop. Him saying you're giving gay guys a bad name. A bad rap. Drop you're giving gay guys a bad rap. Dropping that bar down pretty low. So Vince, you're giving gay guys a bad rap. You're giving gay guys a bad rap with the voice crack. Because you're saying stupid shit. So having said that, Vince is delusional. Maybe he has some mental illness, I'm not sure. He seems like a nice guy. He might have been successful in this gym. He obviously has sold some products. To say that he's a good salesman or not, I have no way of judging that. I don't think he'd do very well in my class. But the reality is, is he was on Marco's thing, and Marco loved him. So the idea that Marco loved him probably meant he was an easy target for Marco to manipulate. So it'll be interesting if he comes back or has any comments. Damn, I thought he was going to say Marco liked him because Marco's also gay. But it was just... You missed an opportunity to dunk on me right there. Easy gay bar right there. Slightly embarrassing, the idea that he was... He didn't know who Scott Johnson was associated Scott Johnson with Glenn and um, anybody that's been paying any attention and not to back up Scott for his um, way of attacking people or the approach of him attacking people. But if you're a fucking goon on Marco's chat, you probably are stupid anyway. So you deserve it. <laughs> you stupid <Ooh>. fuck. <laughs> Finally. Some, one of them saying goons, finally them acknowledging the identity of my cult. Instead of just saying somebody who watches Marco, thank you for talking about the goons, baby. That's a drop. That is a drop. Wow. That's crazy. For real. Um, yes, Astro, we are aware of that. Um, Ooh, new emoji drop. Silicon Valley just sent me a new emoji drop. Wow, that's amazing. I can't believe it. When, where did I make that face? Hilarious. Thank you for that, Silicon Valley. Also, fuck you. Um, the goons, man. The goons. Where is it? Where's the Chet Hanks audio of him saying that? The goons, man. The goons. Fun fact. I'm friends with Chet Hanks. Also, a little Always Marco lore, in case you didn't know. Also, if you're on my Patreon uh, or a YouTube member... I posted a picture of me and Method Man, the rapper from 2017 today. I found it while I was going through old uh, files and transferring over files to my new computer. Crazy. Wow. 
I need to go back. We need a repeat of that for sure. Hus, thank you for the dono. Appreciate you. $7 super chat. And first super chat on the live. Thank you, Hus. Appreciate you. Okay, let's let's go back and hear this again. Vince says, they would never say this stuff to my face. So true. And I could care who less whose channel it is. They're still in cohorts. They're still cohorts in sucking each other off. So true. With Glenn and um, anybody that's been paying any attention and not to back up Scott for his... Uh... Oh, this was also interesting. Peter saying he disavows Scott's approach of attacking people. That's good, at least even though Peter's not much better. Um, way of attacking people or the approach of him attacking people. But if you're a fucking goon on Marco's chat, you probably are stupid anyway. So you deserve it, <laughs> you stupid fuck. Yeah! Yay, the goon! We're a cult. Did Chet teach you that patois? He taught me a little bit. So, having said that, um, I'll let you comment on whatever you want to comment on. Um, yeah, go right ahead, man. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I'll tell you what. You, you said that um, in a few years' time, Vince is going to feel embarrassed by that. I, Them giggling is, gives me so much joy. I think he feels embarrassed by it already, I say. You know when you hear like the sound of a baby laughing? That's the same feeling I get when I hear Scott and Peter laughing. It like warms my heart, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I say that because I've been watching a few of his or listening more when I was driving, listening to his live streams. When Thank you, Silica, for dropping the donate to Peter Mingle's Ego Repair Fund. So true. Bam came back, donated seven dollars. So so stupid that Bam. He's so stupid, frankly. Thank you, Bam. Appreciate you, bro. Whenever someone brings up the debate and things like the ninety nine percent loss rate, or the fact that Scott Johnson is not MLM is fraud. Gray says, do y'all think they have phones on speaker or are they holding the phone to their ear the whole time? I actually do know for a fact that Peter uses one of those like call center Bluetooth headsets. Um, I don't know if his videos are still up, but Peter Mingles, he had a YouTube channel. I think he might have deleted the videos because he was ashamed, but he had YouTube videos. Yeah, he's deleted them since, but he had YouTube videos where he was like on the, uh, he was on there with the headset on showing like, him in action, I guess you could say. He, he does still have this other channel, though, uh, called Network Leads, where it's like an animated... I'm not making this up. This is literally his. Look. Let's talk about following up. We have three phases of working a lead, if you've listened to the stuff that we've done before. Phase one is your icebreaker slash interview. Phase two is your transfer of information. Phase three we call following up and following through and helping people make a decision. When you're prospecting, you're working in your business, those are the three phases. You break the ice, that's part of phase one. You're going to go through a mini interviewing process to see if this is the kind of person you want to work with. Wow. Actually stunning how bad the quality is on that one. can't believe you've done this literally um so that's amazing he has a bunch of those mlm training videos which are all of course the same fucking pitch as every other one their headsets are tied together with a string and they sit in the same house but different rooms right he's blocking them he does these videos on the drive through speaker yeah drive through speaker and then he holds up a logitech webcam in front of it and chops the audio from that actually he uses a, a guitar hero microphone a guitar hero world tour microphone to record it out through the speaker box of the burger king because he's embarrassed by it he's, he's blocking them so i've actually contacted marco this morning because hold on what are we talking about been listening to his live streams whenever someone brings up the debate and things like the 99 percent loss rate or the fact that scott johnson is not mlm is fraud he's blocking them because he's embarrassed by it. He's, he's blocking them. So I've actually contacted Marco this morning because someone in his live chat asked him, why is your debate with Marco not on your channel? And he said that it was Marco's. It was oh, here, now Glenn is showing us the context. Okay. Obsessed with this Amway stuff there. 
Anyways, Vince, you have my permission to re-upload the debate if you want to. I don't care. But I don't see the point to it either. If people search your name, they're going to find it whether my video comes up first or your re-upload of it comes up first. So, what? But I, do I really give a fuck? No. I used to do use a headset for doing seminars and Zoom meetings for Verizon. Nothing wrong with that, says uh, Vince. No, nothing wrong with that. I'm just speculating as to what device they could be using that would give them such bad audio quality. Okay. Joe Peter has a jailbroken gigapet they do the show from. So true. I was expecting Winston Churchill to chime in. It's literally like worse quality than you hear like old World War II radio, like archival footage, archival audio. Silica says it's impressive. They've kept the same audio quality since 1842. I appreciate that consistency. No shit. Rock band two, Mike. <laughs> the two is generous. Uh, insanity is... Okay, we, we saw this. And I saw why. They're, I don't know what to say. You know, like months. We saw this. Okay, okay. So I'm sort of... We're sort of... This is a sequel and a prequel and taking place at the same time live stream right now. All right. He tried to... He asked Marco, well, what job did you do? And then Marco talked about the casino. And then he gave the ridiculous thing that the casino was a pyramid. Now, <laughs> quite simply, this is what a pyramid is. Vince, Glenn is not letting you off the hook. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, Vince says, I told my subscribers about the debate and they listened in. They even subscribed to your channel. My fellow piss troopers love the debate. Don't know what that means, but thank you. This is what a pyramid is not. If every single person is getting paid, then it's not a pyramid. It's not a pyramid scheme and it's not a pyramid. Um, sure, you can argue that it's unfair that, say, if you work in a bank, I heard the other day that Citibank has the CEO earns 486 times more than the average Citibank employee. But it's not a pyramid because every single person that does work for Citibank gets paid. In a pyramid or a pyramid scheme, over 99% of people make zero. And not only do they make zero, the point something of a percent that do make money is making money off the people that aren't making money. Thank you. Just because, so this is nonsense about your job as a pyramid. It's, it's piss troopers and goons. Yep, we're here. So foolish, it's so silly. And the By the way, I'm just going to say this one more fucking time. Or maybe I never said it. When I say I'm moving, I'm moving. If you are a bad, big bunda, big batty, beautiful gal, and you live in Edmonton or Calgary, this is your last chance. I'm not just moving to another neighborhood. I'm out. I'm out of here. And I'm not telling you where I'm going, but you'll certainly be shocked when you find out because you won't find out where I'm headed until after I'm already there. Um, and you will realize how serious I am about pursuing this fight of anti-MLM and not allowing the assassins to capture me. It's very serious. Um... So this is your last chance. If you are a big bunda gyal, holla at me. <laughs> last chance. All right, going once, going. Well, here we go. <sighs> the idea that a person who is educating people on businesses in particular, own businesses is saying something so foolish, it's scary. Because I know, this is what scares and upsets me, there's people out there who are going to see him as some sort of authority, some sort of empire-creating guru, and he's not. <laughs> Scott's going to notify the United Nations. So true. Um, do you guys agree with that, though, that if an organization, if every single person there is being paid, even if it's unfair that the top person is earning 500 times or 1,000 or 2,000 times more than the average employee, that's not a pyramid. In a pyramid, not, not everybody gets paid. Come, a, to, come to Queens, LOL. Where CoffeeZilla is, he, uh, Marco moving off grid. He's moving to Washington. You'll never, you, you won't know. It's not. In fact, I saw a comment on uh, on Marco's uh, video recently from one of the really stupidest people I've ever seen. Uh, her name is uh, Pam McLaughlin or something. I can't remember. Congrats, Pam McLaughlin. You're in the lore. You made it, Pam. Let me go back a little bit. Between a, a, you shouldn't expect to be no retail sales going on. Okay. And you're at the bottom. 
Why do I bother? I already know he's going to be talking about retail sales. Um, just like any other business that was not MLM, let's say you started a, your own little business doing whatever you want to talk about. It's not MLM, but it's your own little business. You're probably going to be losing money for a certain period of time, maybe a year or two, maybe maybe less, maybe more. Um, but the, the big difference between a, a pyramid and a legitimate MLM is the lack of retail sales. That's that's the definition. You can you can see that in the Vima Herbalife cases that the FTC uh, has settlements with. That that's that's it's such settled uh, conclusion that that's a pyramid. It, it's not. In fact, I saw a comment on uh, on Marco's uh, video recently from one of the really stupidest people I've ever seen. Uh, her name is uh, Pam McLaughlin or something. I can't remember her last name. Um, I can't remember her last name. Literally said her last name. You know what that reminds me of? Oh my God, this made me laugh. I saw it on TikTok. It's a clip of Steven Seagal, which even just me saying Steven Seagal, you already know that it's going to be ridiculous because Steven Seagal is a literal cartoon. Steven Seagal, he says he's doing an interview and he says, uh, <laughs> let me find it. I don't want to spoil it. Oh, fuck. I can't find it. Anyways, it was on TikTok. I wouldn't be able to find it. It's a clip of Steven Seagal. He's doing an interview and he's like explaining the uh, he's explaining something to somebody. And he goes, well, you know, it's very um, how do you say in English? You mean your first language, Steven? <laughs> how do you say in English? Literally, that one preppy uh person you went to high school with after they went for like a month long backpacking trip in Europe and they come back and they have an accent or like they're particular about how things are pronounced. How do you say in English? What do you mean? How do you say in English? It's the only language, you know, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was so funny watching him dead ass go, how do you say in English? Like it's not his first language. But you said a pyramid is where the people above you are making money, you know, off of the downline. That, that's not the definition of a pyramid. That's true in an MLM, but that's not what makes it a pyramid, and it's not what makes it wrong. What makes it wrong is lack of retail sales. And, Jesus and how, Christ. When is this guy going to stop, you know? The anti-MLM hunts can't get that through their brains. I, I just don't get it. Like, I, I'll keep repeating it, though, because that is what an illegal pyramid is, is lack of retail sales. Um, it has nothing to do with the levels. It has nothing to do with whether you're getting paid or not paid. It, it has nothing to do with those things. Um, it, it's whether you have retail sales or not. Uh, and, and that's it. Now, let, let's stick to, though, if you want to um, examine an organization and figure out if it's not a pyramid scheme, if it's not a pyramid scheme, if every single person there is being paid, then it's not a pyramid scheme. There you that's go. how you know something is not a pyramid scheme. McDonald's is not a pyramid scheme. You can say a lot of things about has been paid. Therefore, it's not. So, you know, it, it's not the end game that everyone's being paid because uh, it, it might be a failed business in the future. So, you know, be, be careful with that definition because... Such an idiot. You know, here's a casino and everything. Sure. And stuff. Yes. Okay. How many slot hosts were at the casino? At uh, your casino? That I worked at? Mm-hmm. In total, there was... Well, there was... I was the one of three slot hosts, but there was a total of five hosts in all to oversee uh, table games and slots. Those five of us. Okay. Uh, this is Scott and Peter. So funny. Silicon Valley in the chat said, uh, he's moving to North Sentinel Island. Scott Peter, if you guys get there before him in the North Sentinel, if you guys get there before him and let the Sentinelese people know, you could stop him. That's funny because North Sentinel Island is like one of those islands that hasn't been touched by modern technology or civilization, and they'll just kill you if you go there. They'll just kill you with spears and shit. You know where I'm getting at there, right? Sort no. of? No, I don't. Okay. Did you have a boss? I did. Okay. How many bosses did you have? I had one direct boss. Did he have a boss? Uh, it was a she, actually. She had, I think, one, one or two people she answered to that were at the very tip-top of the casino infrastructure, yeah. And did that person have a boss? No. Okay, so that guy, that person was the top of the line, was the president, right? Yeah. Okay, There's your, you got a pyramid right there. Sure. And not only that, I'm kind of surprised that you actually worked at a casino. Sure. Do you think that everything that you did was pretty much honest work? Yes. Really? How so? I yeah. mean, it's a casino. People are losing their shit, basically, yeah. on the slot machines. Yeah, so actually, this is a really, really good uh, line for us to go down. There's two points you bring up 
that I'm gonna address. One is it was a pyramid, and two is the ethical nature of the casino. First, I want to address the, it's a pyramid. I get <laughs> you get to North Sentinel Island and they somehow know about MLM and give you safe passage. So funny. I'm skipping this because we already saw this on the debate. Why did Glenn include it in this part? For context, I guess. All right, here's the last part. And um, here he's roasting you using Glenn's site. Yeah, I just thought he was ignorant. Um, the, the, there's no way he did much. And there wasn't much time for him to do research, right? Because he was making these accusations so quickly after he even knew me. There's just no way he could have done the research. And, and so, you know, just by the time frame, it was obvious um, that, that he did not. And, and, and for him to confuse my... Vince, did you watch my Dale interview? I think you would have enjoyed it. Boys with lens, like I said earlier. You know, we sound so much alike. That was a snark. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, it, it's not like we sound similar. You know, I know that um, some of Marco's people get the two of us mixed up, you know, because we do sound more similar than, you know, comparing like me and, and, and Glenn, no doubt. Um, yeah, so, I mean, actually, um, uh, so what, what uh, Vince has done, he hasn't responded to any of my emails, but what he did do was he did this little email, I mean, this little uh, YouTube on his YouTube account. Um, and again, if you want to find it, um, his handle on YouTube is the home business king. So if you go to that, that uh, to be a talking head and consider yourself a creator, that's the name that YouTube gave the people to make him you know, feel special. Um, he's just a talking head, just like anybody else on YouTube, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, unless you're doing something like you know, showing some of the, something that's really incredible, you know, like a race or, you know, some kind of a competition or, or show. Robert Fitzpatrick's Ponzionomics, whoever you are in the chat, change your username. I'm serious. Showing someone how to make something, you know, demonstrating something. Unless you actually are Robert Fitzpatrick, which I don't think you are, right? No, you're not. All you are is a talking head, and that's all you are. <laughs> and that's not, that's not creative. So anyway, I'll get off of that. But anyway, the home business king, and he's got a video there, which I think is his all-time most viewed video. Um, he, he's got no traction on anything else from what I can tell. Um, but he did about a 10, 11 minute. Uh, Showing something incredible like a race. So of all the content on YouTube, you know, there, hey, Mr. Beast, there's your next big idea, you know? <laughs> I need a donation from Lou Vega. It's been a minute since I've had a dono from Lou Vega. I've been catching up on your other live streams. Marco, I watched the Dale one. He's a nice guy. I chatted a bunch in the old Better Network forum. Nice. Um, criticism of me. And then I replied to him with about, I think it was 11 things that he got wrong. You know, so it's like one mistake a minute that he made in that video. Um, and then we, you know, had some back and forth uh, comments. Um, and I'll just read the, uh, the last couple of them here. Um, do we have Glenn back? I, I don't want to take up his time. No, nope. I'll tell you when he comes back. So... So, uh, yeah, I'll just go through some of these. So I, I did 11 things you got wrong, and I'm going to go through all those. But then he responded and said, you are older than me, but you act childish to the point that I have to say that. <laughs> I True. didn't bring up Marco's dealer info as I felt it was inflammatory. But in any event, why should I even go on your show? You haven't demonstrated any actual benefit or experience. The only info I could find um, was... Oh, so you did reply, Vince. Was that you were in Amway for 13 years in some Fed lawsuit ordering a fine of 631 k although it could be someone else. So wait a minute, Enpaz. Somebody who's good at computers, can somebody go confirm this? This SEC Scott Johnson $600,000 fine? I just found it. Scott E. Johnson from 2011. I... Know that Scott Johnson from Losing Fortunes Radio, his middle initial is E, but I didn't think that this was him. Hold on, bro. 53 years old, resident of Lake Forest, Minnesota. That doesn't look right because I'm pretty sure Scott is from Texas. Guilty to one count of unlawful securities transactions and six counts of theft. Find... 18 months in prison and restitution in the amount of $631,000. I don't think this is him, though. There's no way. Let's see if he admits it. So explain, dot, dot, dot. So I came back and said, I'm not going to explain it. Scott Eats Johnson. The jokes write themselves. It's funny. Both Peter and Scott have names that are uh, euphemisms for penis. Peter and Johnson. Anything to you except on my podcast. And then he answered and he says, you can't explain something as simple as to what value you present. What up, Sabrina? To convince me to come on your show. Give me a break. You were fined 631. Uh, 
Uh, Vin says that the biggest mistake I made was responding to the Homer Simpson of MLM. Yep. Once you respond to him, you're you're stuck. You're trapped. Hey, yeah, from the SEC, there was a Scott E. Johnson on file with them, and my answer was I can't explain, but I'm not going to type a novel. I um, I'm also not trying to convince you of anything. If you want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, we can do that using Facebook or Instagram. And his last comment back to me, and this, I made that comment nine hours ago. He finally came back one hour ago, and he said, oh, Lord, fine. <laughs> so, so, yeah, this, this guy's not the brightest light bulb on the string. There's no doubt. no doubt. So, Vince, are you going on Losing Fortunes Radio? Was it him in the SEC thing? Yeah, but he thinks he is. And I'll tell you what, Peter, he did a lot of, um, I don't know how much, he did some at least, um, uh, telemarketing. And what he reminds me of... <laughs> Vince just forwarded the email to five people and the curse should lift. So funny. Is the typical telemarketer, uh, or, or, and I think he was also like the help desk for different cell phone companies where people would call and complain and he would have to try to, you know, help them and calm them down and, and sort of, you know, empathize with them and, and try to get them to, you know, not be so upset um, and, and use those people skills on the phone. Um, but, you know, most, most real you know, customer service people, um, they really don't care. They're, they're just putting on an act. And, and that's how he comes across to me, is he's putting on this act about being upset and all of his expertise and all this stuff. It's just a big act. And um, I don't think he's going to want to come on the show now. So I don't, I don't think I have too much, I don't yeah, too much, too much to be concerned about. <laughs> Vince, you got to go on his podcast so I can see if that $600,000 thing is him because he would be the same age as the Scott Johnson in that report. Disappointed. Uh, Glenn, you're back. Yeah, hey guys, sorry about that. Okay, no problem. Hey, no problem Glenn. So you might be traveling. If, if your phone cracks up or you get disconnected, we understand. We have about 18 or 19 minutes left. If uh, if we're done with after that, if you get disconnected, you won't be able to call back in because the showtime schedule that we have is uh, closed up. Immobilizer, I don't think your membership expired. I think you're just on your wrong account. You're not on your Benjamin account. Okay. So anything else related to whatever topic it is? You know, Scott, I, I, I don't necessarily like to talk about Marco, <laughs> but the idea that he had this guest and the guest was kind of trashing both you guys at the same time. Okay, we already heard this, right? Uh, leads me to say at least we'll give him a little bit of uh, radio show time for, for a little bit of time as well. So back to you, Scott. Yeah, wow. and I have to make a comment too on Bam. I mean, the guy is so stupid. Okay, this is just the Bam clip was taken from this. So that means that I'm how stupid am I then? If Okay, we heard this. Okay, is this the end of the saga, Glenn? Is this the end of? I mean, it's obviously still ongoing, right? But is this the is this the most current update we have to it? Yeah, seven hours ago. All right, well, we made it through. We made it through, everyone. So, in summary, in summary, Vince and I did a stream together. Scott thinks Vince was stupid, but also that I am stupid. Vince somehow both schooled me in the debate, but also Vince is stupid, according to Scott and Peter. Vince, Scott tried to get Vince on the show by harassing him with emails, which is his calling card. Vince made a video responding. Peter, Scott and Peter responded to the response. Vince responded to the response of the response of the response. And here's me commentating on all of it. Bam, welcome back. I took calls when they asked for a supervisor. I also trained people, created presentations, and coached people. In other words, work, in other words, worked a regular corporate job. Yep. Vince schooled Marco until he refused to go into Losing Fortunes Radio. Vince, it's the only way you can win a debate. Scott's stupidity will make you look smart. For sure, buddy. Well, this was good. And uh, how long have we been doing this? Fucking long enough. All right, well... We'll be back on Saturday. I'm either going to be doing a stream playing the MLM guru assassination mission of Hitman, which I can't wait for the MLMs to use in court in real life and say that I'm glorifying or like promoting violence against people in multi-level marketing. I literally cannot wait for that. Um, or I will be doing a stream reacting to the recent imprisonments of Cash Cartier and Austin Godsey, a.k.a. Austin Fraudsey, um, two people who I've documented before on YouTube slash Instagram, YouTube and or Instagram in the case of cash, because he wasn't in one of my YouTube videos, which I greatly regret. But, um, I did debate him on Instagram once upon a time. And back then on Instagram, I didn't realize that there was a, a live archive. I thought, 
I didn't know that you could save live streams, basically. So that's my bad. I don't think I have that. I do recall somebody screen recording the debate with Cash Cartier. I'll have to go dig through my DMs and see if I can find whoever that was that screen recorded it. But uh, see if I can find that again. But they're both in jail for horrible, horrible crimes against women. Um, and, you know, tried to warn people about these fucking guys, but all good, you know. The, one of the main girls who's speaking out about Cash Cartier, his ex-girlfriend, was like pretty vocal against me back in 2021 when I was going against these guys. And it's like, fuck, man. I don't say that to say I told you so. I say that to be like, I wish y'all would listen. I'm trying to save people's lives out here. Hashtag God first, for real. Um, Goon Gaming, yeah. Appreciate it, Vince. Growing up a game of telephone. Yes, Val S. What up, Val? Later. Yeah. Thank you, Jessica. One of the final streams, guys. I think I think we have two or three more streams where I'm actually going to be here in this place with the green screen background in the mansion on the commune. But after years of living lavish in the, in the palace, you know, the authorities are circling the compound and uh, we're running out of resources, and I'm going to have to flee through one of my El Chapo tunnels to get out uh, beyond the compound walls. And some goons will go down in the raid, I'm sure. Uh, some will die. Some will be arrested. Others will escape into the forest and the river. Um, you know, some will hide probably in secret compartments and rooms. But, uh, yeah, I've got to go and start my next chapter. You know, like when at the end of, uh, what is it, Silence of the Lambs, when he, like, flees to Spain or something. I'm having an old friend for dinner, or whatever he says. Um, shout out Anthony Hopkins. I know you're probably watching this. All right. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> and Paz says, good night, everyone. <laughs> yep. Amazing how I'm supposed to be debating Marco and ended up responding to a nutcase. I know. Well, Vince, that's the thing about Scott Johnson is he has a way of uh, leeching himself onto everything I do because... He's literally on my dick, but yeah. Back to the poop hut. Yeah. We have our Kool-Aid packets just in case. Fuck, so dark. Goons fleeing to Argentina. Let's go. There's a YouTube app for computer? Crazy. All right, y'all. Peace out. Thank you, guys. I didn't even end up using the goon court thing. What you were about. I was going to use this to mediate the beef between Vince and Scott, but it was so inco incoherent. All right, y'all. Peace out. Marco. Marco. Come on, Marco. Fuck him. Remember, Marco? You know everything. Remember? Remember, Marco? You know everything. Peace.